such a fucking he's worse than phil man he's a fucking media whore my cat <laughs> no we'll do it live fuck it do it live <laughs> Welcome to the Mouthpiece, episode 39, year two. Today, I have special guest, Mr. Mike Dentali, and also poker player, Matt Glantz. So today, we're going to discuss everything that's going on in the world, all the craziness, the quarantine, coming up next on the Mouthpiece. What up, what up, everybody? We're live. With my good friends, uh, poker player, Mr. Mike Dentali, and what poker up? player, Mr. Mac Glantz. How's it <clears> going <throat> today, buddy? Guys, Do- are you ready? Doing good, gonna, doing good. We're going to discuss the craziness of the world. Um, we're going to discuss uh, poker, poker players. That's Matt's job. Um, and uh, we're going to discuss uh, politics and whatever else is going on. Uh, so, um what's up guys uh first off uh what's uh your opinion of uh how you guys like being quarantined um first i'd like to make a statement um full disclosure matt paid me five thousand dollars to let him exploit me tonight okay and uh, i just want to let everybody know that okay well there you go now it all makes sense okay so um matt what's your uh what's your opinion of the situation uh it's you know it's, it's what we got to do uh it's for me it's not that bad because i got uh two teenagers teenagers at home 17 year old boy and a 15 year old girl it's kind of fun uh being at home with them and kind of you know gets us to good family time i think a lot of people in this country right now are experiencing good family time they haven't they don't really experience in during normal times like my kids never want to be around me generally want to be with their friends and out of the house right and we're kind of stuck together so it's kind of fun yeah and um you know i you know everybody you know wants to paint the doom and gloom because that's what the media does but, you know, there's a lot of I really think there's a lot of good things that could come out of this. I mean, me, I've been kind of quarantined for five years anyways because of my health issues. I, I leave the house like three times a month. So nothing really changes for me here. Uh, it's a little bit more because now I can't even go out of the house. But um, uh, like you said, um, I, I do believe a lot of good things will come out of this. I mean, people, the way we looked at the world two weeks ago is now completely different the way we're going to look at it forward. And um, uh I mean, going forward, what do you got? What's your guys' opinions? On, uh, give me some thought process of how you think it's going to play out here. Matt, you want to start here? What's your opinion? Um, so my best guess right now is that the future is going to look a little different than it is was in the past. Uh, obviously, for the very short-term foreseeable future, we're going to be very, uh, you know, not no one's going to want to touch each other or be in other uh, each other's space. It's right. also been going to be embarrassing now to sneeze or cough in public, where before it was just a natural thing. Right. Now, if you sneeze or cough, people are going to look at you like you're a leper. Yeah. So things are going to be different but for a while. That's that's not going to last that long. I, I disagree. I think like with anything <laughs> in the, in the, in the, I, I would say maybe in the next couple of months, I agree. Yeah. Just like nine 11. I mean, after nine 11, everybody was like pulling together yeah. We got to stick together. We now love each whole, other. We can yeah. never let that happen. Fucking two years later, everybody forgot about it. Yeah. Not even two years later. Same thing with this. I mean, how many times are people going to go from handshakes to fist pump and back to handshakes? I'd say in yeah. about two, three months. I, I, you know, I, I, it's I funny so, that, that, that the, it's what's really funny is before this thing, <laughs> before this thing hit, <laughs> before this thing hit, hit DEFCON 10, okay, which was basically two weeks ago. So, we are, I, I went to, to San Jose for the Bay 101 tournament exactly 16 days ago. Everybody was going crazy. You shouldn't go. You shouldn't go. There was nine, 792 cases in the United States, and there was um, uh, exactly uh, uh, 46 cases in the San Jose, San Francisco area. But that was like 46 out of 792. So they consider that the epicenter. I'm like, oh, big deal. I'm going into the epicenter of the virus. I'm like, there's 46 people. There's 9 million people out there. You guys have lost your fucking minds. So I went out there. And as I went out there, uh, the tournament started on Wednesday. And then the NBA shut down Wednesday night. And then everything went crazy from there on out. So, um, you know... With that said, what, what Matt was saying about sneezing, I, I mean, 
on on Sunday, I went to Walmart, Walmart Walgreens to, to, to just grab a couple things I needed for the trip. And I coughed like a couple times. And one person turned around. And I said, oh, gee, let me just pretend to cough. Like, so I went <coughs> like seven times. And all seven people in line turned around at me. That was before anything was quarantined. <laughs> that was before anybody was going crazy with the doomsday of the world coming to an end. Um, so with that said, you know, I, I think Matt might be right on this one, Mikey. For how, but for how long do you think it's going to be like um, that? I will say until at least, okay, they say this, this thing's, there's a chance it could come back in October. It's, it, there's, okay. not, could, it, it, there's not a chance it will come back. That's a okay. Fact. Okay. That's a fact. So let's just say it comes back in October. I was listening to Fauci today and some other people. They want this vaccine. They say normally it takes a year to be sent Correct. forward. They Correct. want it. They want it. They want like six months supply of it manufactured by October. So if they get the go ahead, they don't have to worry about getting the supply out, which is like nine months quicker fact track than any other vaccine in history. I, I do believe they're going to end up doing that because they have to, they, they can't have another mass panic where the, where the entire economy's in a free fall again, you know? You, you have to understand something. What's going on, you, you can't blame them. They want to be safe, meaning it spreads. It's a virus. It's easily spread everywhere. They're containing it. They're going in the right path. As far as it mutating, it hasn't mutated, which is the most important thing they're worried about. Correct, correct, yeah. And for all of you as out there who don't understand what mutating means, that means the strain of the virus <laughs> um, mutating into a different form of a strain that is different from the one there. Right. To put it more in perspective, like the virus they had a hundred years ago was in the 1920s. It mutated to the point where it killed people in eight hours flat. As soon as yes. someone uh, caught the, the virus, they died in eight hours. That was like the worst part of the strain. Right. And looking forward, that's what they're looking to avoid. That's the most important thing because it spreads so easily and, and imagine it spreading and mutating. Why don't it's you look disaster. at the camera, Mike? You're looking, you're looking up in the air. Why don't you yeah. look at the people? It, there you go. It's, it, it's a disaster if it spreads that quickly and mutates. But because it's being contained, which they're doing, I think, an incredible job at keeping mm -hmm. it contained, um, and it hasn't mutated, mm -hmm. I think um, we've probably seen the worst in the next week or so. Yeah. And I think it's only going to get better. I think we have numerous countries working on a vaccine, working together, because it's uh, global. It's not just in the United States. I think um, they'll probably have that in the next five, six months. I don't believe it's going to be a year. I also yeah. believe like any virus, this is a virus that once it's around, it doesn't disappear. It'll be around forever. The only difference so. is we'll have a vaccine for it. And I just think moving forward, you know, it's going to be the next couple of months, it's going to be tough. But uh, five, six months down the road, if it's contained, it doesn't spread. We come out with the vaccine. It's back to business as usual in six months. I agree. I agree. Um, now, we're going to we're switch off a little bit. A little bit. Now, a lot of people in the as you know, um, I'll speak with to Mike, and then I'll I'll let uh, uh, Matt have his say on the situation. Is um, switch over to the the um, media uh, agenda of the virus. Okay, Trump is trying to lift up the country, and and come out with the message of it would be nice if we could start open for business in Easter now. He never once says we're opening for business on Easter. He says it would be nice if we could do that. With that said, he's trying to cause optimism. And if you turn on CNN, they want to tell you everybody who's they dying. They go into full, and full blown gloom and doom. Gloom 100%. and doom. Now, with that said, Trump's approval numbers on the virus has gone from 43% to 63%. Trump, Trump's approval re record in the country has gone from 43% to 49%. With the reason why I say that, see that, and I'll ask Matt his his opinion on it, is because when you have a crisis this big, everything gets manufactured. Um, uh, everybody is seeing the glass like a hundred times gets gets magnified, and I, I just believe that people don't want to hear gloom and doom. They want to hear optimism. What's your opinion on that, uh, Mike? And then uh, give me your opinion on that, Matt. Um, I mean, basically, as a president, you have to understand. Look into the camera. He, Don't look in the uh, air. He wants, he wants what's best for all Americans and what's best for all Americans right now, keeping everybody safe, 
having no deaths and getting the economy back on track. Mm -hmm. No economy, we're fucked. Yeah. Uh, people dying, we're fucked. Either way, we're screwed. So we have mm -hmm. to find a healthy balance. Correct. The main objective, obviously, is to get the equipment we need, get people um, quarantined, get the tests. But also, in the back of his mind, obviously, he has to get the uh, economy back on track for everyone. I own a business. I'm getting crushed right now. Can't take deliveries. Can't go on jobs. Can't do anything. My workers can't get ma uh, can't make money. I have a couple of workers that I house. I'm not charging them rent. So we're all getting pretty hurt by this. But um, obviously, in the back of our minds, what most people want to know is when can we go back to work? So <clears throat> we understand the media has an agenda. Uh, the media is mostly liberal. They have a huge bias. They hate his guts. Um, any we went from you know they go from one point to the other point first it was you, you know the next the thing they're working on right now is to discredit him as handling this as uh as presidential or handling it as a leader so they're looking to take him down by any means necessary anything he says they're going to find a negative in it they're going to try to find a negative point there you know so when he says i want to get the economy back by two or three weeks from now obviously it's not cut in stone there's right. a lot of things that are going to come up that might change it. But his main agenda is to get it going. He wants to put the American public, the people at ease. We're going to get right. right back on the economy. So I think he's, you know, what he's doing is uh, saying the right things. Um, obviously, he's not a great speaker. Correct. He's not articulate. He's not always going to say the perfect words. He's not a politician. The bottom line is he was hired because he's not a politician. So we can't expect him to be a politician, nor will he ever be a politician. Sure. I cringe myself when he talks. Me too. When he starts speaking, I'm like, <laughs> fuck, I'm like a soccer mom. I'm like, come on, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Me Obviously too. <laughs> we're, you know, we, we all do it. And um, he has a lot of personality flaws. But the bottom line is, is his heart's in the right place. He wants what's best for the country. And um, there are people out there that hate his guts. We're never gonna change their minds. There's no. people that uh, that lean very hard left. They'll never like him. They they want another liberal president. So it doesn't matter what we say, and they're going to be against him. It's all about the independence, the people that are on the fence. Right. Those are the people that the media are targeting. But the people are smartening up to that because constantly, whenever you put on MSNBC or CNN, anybody with a brain could just see, wow, which is Trump bashing 24-7. So I'll say there was bash Trump. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, pivot over to you, Matt. So you're you're more of the center, probably you say you you lean at probably three, four <laughs> degrees left. Then Till says you're a closet conservative or libertarian that just panders to the left. Um, what's your opinion? What's your take on the situation? OK, so Trump in a nutshell for me, Trump, I, I actually do think he wants what's best for the country, but yeah. not at the expense of himself or in any expense in any way regarding himself. So if he's going to make a decision that's good for the country, but it's going to hurt his poll numbers, he's probably not willing to do it. If he's going to make a decision that's good for the country, but it's going to cost him personally money, he's probably not going to do it. If it's going to hurt his image, you know, he's very big on marketing himself, he's not going to do it. So he, to what extent, I think, yeah, to I think what he extent. genuinely wants what's good for the country, as long as it doesn't it's hurt him or put him in a bad position. And yeah, but he's I don't... Not, I, go ahead. Keep going. So, so I don't think he's... I don't think he's evil. A lot of people want to say he's evil. I don't think he's evil. I don't think he's necessarily uh, wants to hurt anyone. I think he just thinks of himself. He's self-consuming and doesn't think of the consequences of, of his actions. He just thinks it from his view. You know, he's one of those guys that just sees everything from his – he can't be, put himself in anyone else's shoes. No, I agree. With, I, with that, I will agree on, okay? But he's with, learning to do right. better on that. So with, with what you he's, said there – He's 70-something years old. He's not going to learn anything. With, what, with, no, 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 this is what my opinion, my my answer yeah, to that is. Mike, okay? just let me say one. Just let me say one thing. He's never been president before, Matt. He's never had to answer to anyone ever before. He's always been in charge. He's always ran companies. He's never answered. Now, being the president, he has so many people around him that he has to confer with, get their opinion on, answer to them. Not in a way where he's bowing down, but he's getting their input. So it's a first time for him being able to not see the world in only his lens and his view. So he's learning and he tries his best. And one thing the American public has to know, and this is a fact, Trump is pretty religious now. People don't realize that now. They don't show oh, it as much. No, I know that. But Trump 
in the last four or five years is very religious. So when they bring up things he did 10 years ago or 12 years ago, that was a different Trump. He's, he's very religious. Uh, he's a different man as far as, and a lot of people do this as they get older. And I have my pros and cons about religion. Um, as they get older, they find religion. They're more conservative. They're more family values. And he's a different Trump. And I don't think most liberal, uh, most libs will give him a chance because they, they're against what he's for. They don't want to listen to him. And he hurts himself. He shoots himself in the foot a lot yeah, of the times. He does do that. Now, now here's a, like I was telling people, and you guys could, could agree or disagree. So, and, and I, I've been trying to, I, I tell my friends, I tell my girl, we talk about it all the time, is, is the fact that I, I don't believe he should be at the press conference. I believe he should have it. That's what a press secretary is for. Totally you, agree. You, you tell, because you, he has nothing to gain. No matter what he totally says or agree. does, he cannot totally win agree. with the media. Okay. I was saying the same thing. Okay. So, totally agree. so how, you get, you, you, he, all he has to do is put out his team and his statements through the press secretary and Correct. address the nation 100%. once a week from the oval in a tele in, from the prompter. And that's all he needs to do by him being there. He's uh, it, it, it gives the media any little, like you just it said, things no they, they're going to run with him. He has everything right. to lose and nothing to gain. And well, I realize I, that's his choice. It's just, it is his choice. That's his narcissism. We, we, that's we his agree. narcissism. Exactly. Okay, 100%. so we're all on the same page there. Okay. Yep. So if if he doesn't get the country through this the next four weeks, it, it, he'll have. He's either good. It's gonna. It's like he said. It's his choice. He's either if he gets it through, then he gets reelected with eighty percent approval rating. If he doesn't, he gets defeated <laughs> with twenty percent approval rating. And what that's people have it. to realize is everyone's saying, okay, if the economy tanks. He's going to look bad. That's totally incorrect. Not People this. out there understand yeah. the economy is tanking because of the virus. It has nothing right. to do with him. It's how he handles the virus and how he handles the next eight to ten months going forward. And that's a long time from now. I guarantee right. you, the economy bounces back uh, with two trillion dollars uh, being injected. Things well, are going to be right more than. The, the by the way, rate. there'll be more than two trillion. That's right. just number. That's number round. one. There'll be another. There'll be at least another two trillion. You hear it here, right here on the mouthpiece. There'll be at least another two trillion in three weeks. So, what I, what I like about the guy, just for the record, he's not a phony. Whenever you look at a politician like Nancy Pelosi, like Chuck Schumer, all you see is a phony. Well, yeah, snake. You, you can see them reading they're off. Sickening. They're reading off a paper. They do nothing. They never address the American public like from the heart. Like one thing, right. yeah, Trump There's makes no a lot of mistakes, but he's always heart. talking off Correct. the cuff. Okay, exactly. And, and if you're a not if you're an honest person, you would be. You'd be talking from the like not from the fucking news from the paper all the time. So I mean, uh, talking from the paper, they both do that. But the bottom line is, is when you get Schumer with his prepared speech, he's like fucking on stage giving out a uh, like he's acting. I you could just see you. the phoniness oozing out of his pores. It's sickening, and the way he describes the words, it's like you know he he almost wants to. It's like he's fucking narrating like a fucking horror story. I can't even watch him. It's sickening, so, and a lot of these politicians are like that. They couldn't give a rat's ass about the public. It's all about power. It's all about staying in power. I mean, look at Pelosi, which is 109 years old. Right. Fucking and retire Fe Her and Feinstein are 160, uh, 170 between them. And they just Biden ran, they is just ran for re-election. Biden so go ahead, Matt. Steps away from step on in here, Matt. What's it's your hard favorite? to get a word in with you guys. But I know. I'm go sorry. ahead, Matt. That's why we got your art. Think about our, Trump. Trump is very, very genuine. He lies all the time, but he's not lying because he, he thinks he's lying. He's exactly. convincing him. He's trying to big convince difference. himself of his own self of these lies. So he cannot handle bad news. When Trump gets bad news, you know, bad data, whatever, he massages it in his mind and he's telling Wrong. you the way he wants it to, to present it to himself, to make himself believe it. So when he's lying to you or lying to the public, he doesn't think he's lying. He's just trying to convince himself. You know, we've all done it where we're trying to convince ourselves of something right. and we're, we're talking through it out loud and telling somebody or one of our friends, you know, right. maybe it's not the truth, but we're trying to convince them of something. Matt, I, I agree with you, but 100% you say it's truth. lying or exaggerating? I think exaggerating. No, he, I don't think lying is the right he's word. He's doing it all the time. It's, it's lying. Yeah, but he's Matt, lying. Just, let, me, because, let me ask you something. The reason he's lying is because it's not the truth. That's all. It's not. But, but let, me, it, let me ask you a question. That's the word. That's out, just the definition listen, of the word. Lying when you come out with a straight out lie or exaggerating. He's known. If you listen to what he says, he exaggerates everything he says. And there's a big difference between lying and exaggerating. Lying is pulling something out of thin air that isn't true. 
exaggerating. Right, I'll, I'll give you an example. People, I'll, I'll, 20 just, people I'll, I'll explain to you guys what I'm saying. Okay, people let Matt talk. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I guess it was like a month ago where, you know, the virus started getting a little hairy. It was before everything started. And, you know, we, nobody, none of us knew what to make of it, but he got on TV and he said, you know, we have 15 cases, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it, it, it's going to be a zero in, soon. It's going to be zero. Okay. It's 15 at a time. It's going to yep. be zero. I what, agree with you. It's not like he's lying and saying like, okay, this is the science. Can I ask what you? Happened they... is, wait, wait, let me finish. So what happened was his scientist advisors told him, uh, you know, Mr. President, That's there's going to the be, there's going to be a hundred thousand cases. This thing's going to be exponential, blah, blah, blah. And yep. he's he's hearing that, but in his mind he's like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. He just, he can't handle bad news. He can't process bad news. So in his correct. mind, he's telling himself, he's telling himself uh, that we're going to get through this. So it's like they're just panicking. You know, they're just scaring everybody. And he goes on TV and he says, oh, uh, it's going to be it's 15 now, but it's going to be zero. He doesn't he doesn't think he's Matt, lying. He's actually lying. <laughs> That that you're correct about, but here's the major major pivot point for him. I think that everything you said is true. Yes. Everything you said is true. The only difference is, is when he sits back and they all start attacking him, then his advisors come around and start feeding him with the info, and right. then he's like, "Fuck, maybe that maybe I am wrong here," because his main problem was opening his mouth without getting all the facts in first. He's acting like right. a person and not a president. That's the Correct. problem. Like me and you, when this first came out, I said this is bullshit. And I, I'll stand by that. Huh. Awesome. As soon as they started closing down all the games in Vegas, I said, this is fucking huge. And we talk, we get ahead of ourselves. Like a lot of people, we give our opinions. And he can't do that as president. He has to shut his fucking mouth and wait because his opinion is valued a lot more than a normal person's. But when he starts getting the facts, uh, he doesn't like to take responsibility for his past prior mistakes as having a big mouth. It's and he has problem. personality flaws. He does. Right. he does. But that doesn't make him any different. He's not an evil man. He's not a, a habitual liar. He doesn't want to, uh, you know, just lie to the public. But he, a lot of times, he talks when he shouldn't be talking. Okay, Agreed. So, so here's my... He just can't my, process bad news. That's what right, it is. Here, here's, process my, here, here's also my take on the situation, okay? He has intelligent uh, people who give him intelligence on this virus, okay? So... For three, ever since the first leak happened, Tucker Carlson has been covering this on every single show for the three months straight. Um, he went to Mar Lago, I think it was the seventh of March, to visit with the president. There's a there's a um, article in Vanity Fair discusses about his visit to Mar Lago. Kimberly Guilfoyle was having a birthday party there. They asked him, "Did you go for that?" He goes, "No, I didn't even know." That was even going on there. He goes, I went to meet the president. He had never met the president. He had never talked to the president. Despite everybody thinks he works at Fox News, they all meet the president. That's not true. And right. he said, he said straight out, I went there to tell the president that whoever is giving him information on this virus is giving him bad info. He called out Lindsey Graham. He called out a couple other never Trumpers that were uh, from 2016. And he said straight out, this is serious. And the next day they completely pivoted in a panic mode. Okay. Yep. So, I've been saying forever, the, the the intelligent community have been trying to take him down, which they did with all the Russia bullshit, okay? It is proven that the intelligent communities have tried to take him down. Schumer went out on public and said, if, if you do this, the intelligent communities have six ways to Sunday to get back at you, okay? And I do believe that he was uninformed. There's no way that he was doing rallies three weeks, a, a month ago, and telling everybody it's going to be fine, and then we have this three weeks. If he knew this was coming, I just, just wait. So, you, are you part of the premise. intelligent community, Mikey? <laughs> Am I what computer? Are you part of the intelligent community, Mikey? I'm not very intelligent. No. <laughs> <laughs> wait. So let me get this straight. Your premise, Mike, is that the intelligence community hates Trump so bad they want to get him out of office that they're sabotaging him by giving him bad information on the virus, so his poll numbers go down and he loses the election. I, that, that's, I, I, you don't Trash even want to know where my head is, okay? <laughs> my, my head no, no, is no, no. somewhere around no. there in that area. <laughs> yeah, I just want to, I just want to clear it okay, up. I, okay, I I'm not going to. That's not the case. No, no, no. Sure I'm not going to tell you this, okay? I mean, I don't <laughs> listen. I, with that said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read off something. With that, right? Hey, Mike, you, you, you are a thousand percent correct. Maybe about a year ago, <laughs> he's already no, he's a thousand percent correct because. Since he got elected into office, all the people he's been firing and hiring 
how the left is using against him. Oh my God, he fired someone else. Yeah. These are all Obama holdovers. These are yeah. people that can't stand him, talking behind his back. They're acting like normal people, like me and you. When someone walks out of a room and let's say Joe Schmo came in and, and he walks away and we're like, oh, he's such a dick, I can't stand that guy. Or, yeah, he's such an exaggerator, he's so cheap. Same thing with these guys. They're all talking behind his back, people on his staff. As soon as he leaves the room, and we know 100%, we talk about him, so you can imagine his staff that hates his guts to begin with, what they're saying behind his back. Okay, so, so there's a Italia, let me clarify what you're saying, just for, for the viewers. So we get this, we already got what, what Mikey's saying. Let's get the tally for it. So all right. these scientists or intelligent no, guys, no, intelligence no, guys that no, Obama holdovers that. that hate that hate Trump will give them bad information solely to hurt him politically, even though it might cost people millions they of people. They don't lives. care who dies. The left will do anything <laughs> not, to I'm, get him out of office. Can you guys not, take not, off those two baseball caps and put on some tin hats? Because the not, podcast will go way You better. don't even <laughs> want to know where I think, buddy. We need some but, tinfoil hats up there. Matt, what, he's, what, he's saying is, what he's saying is maybe he believes that now. I don't believe that now. He has a lot of people around him that he's handpicked that are on the same wavelength as him. They believe the same way as him. I don't believe that now. It used to be like that. He's had a lot of people that were looking to sabotage him, a lot of people that didn't believe the same way he believed. That went on before. As far as now, yeah, there might be one or two, but it's nowhere close to what it used to be. He's Here, fired a lot here's of those a question, people. Here's a question to you, Matt. Okay, and, 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 and you give me a fair answer. You know, I, 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 I'll give you an honest answer. Yeah, here's the thing. The thing is, is, is like, it's one thing people could love or hate about me. I tell, I, you know, I speak my mind. Uh, I can't, I can't completely speak my mind. I think the three mind. of us all speak our mind. All yeah. And like that's that. why we're all on here right now is. Okay. So let's just go, let's pivot back to February 24th. <clears throat> okay. That was the day the impeachment trial came to an end. All right. During the entire time, let's just say the first month of January when Chinese, uh, uh, CNN was calling it the Chinese Wuhan virus, the Chinese Wuhan virus, right? And then the, the WHO put out, and you can all look this up, these are all fact-checked, put out on, on January 20th, January 15th, 16th, and 20th, they put out three things. There is no proof of human-to-human -human contact with the new virus. On January 31st, Trump said, I don't give a fuck, and he closed the borders to China. He refused to allow planes in and out of China. He was called by Biden, by Bernie, by every left-wing media, the normal words, a racist, a xenophobe. A, he's overreacting. He, he's going to cause economic destruction to our country. Okay? Now, the next three weeks, why, the, all that, why they were 24-7 on impeachment, 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 the, nowhere on CNN did you hear anything about the virus. Yet, yet, yet Tucker... Was, was talking about it every single day on his show on Fox, okay? Now, all of a sudden, impeachment comes to an end. I think it was the 24th, right? And what? And now everybody fucking switched over from impeachment, impeachment to corona, 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 right? Right. Do you Obviously. really believe if Trump knew? Now, now I'm just going to say, I do believe that he was at this last rally. You could go, everybody could go look up his last rally that he had, I think it was South Carolina or Nevada, whichever the last one was, right? Where, where he, that he's going to say, he never called it a hoax. That's all the Democrats make it shit up. He said the media outrage was a Democratic hoax. Okay. Do you, and he said, I've been on the phone with Xi Jinping. He assures me everything's fine. This is why I believe that China knew this was coming and he was given bad information by not only the intelligence community, but by Xi Jinping. Now, after Italy happened, that's when everything switched in a different gear. That's all I have to say on that. Now, I just don't believe he's at a rally telling everybody this if he was told that there could be a serious thing, a thing to worry about. And you're, you'd have to say that he's completely fucking insane, which you know that he's not, and Mike knows that he's not. So what's your opinion on that, Matt, how, how they didn't cover it, and then they went straight to that after the impeachment hearing, and they called him all those names. If he would have just followed his instincts – and shut down air travel everywhere. He'd be the greatest hero of mankind. He and, and and then it. What would everybody be saying? A hundred percent. They fucking ripped. What's him your opinion, 20... Matt? Answer that. So you're asking. You're asking a couple different questions. Okay. The, the first question about Trump. Why would he do that at a rally? Uh, mm -hmm. Just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So Trump cannot process bad news. He cannot handle bad news, whether it's bad 
polling numbers, bad scientific data. He just can't process it. So when it when the, the good news comes in, he takes it for what it's worth. He takes it for what it is, and he processes it, and he blurts it out, and it's great because it's exactly it's a fact. When the news, good news comes in, he doesn't have to exaggerate. He can, he can put it right back out to the public, and it, it all makes sense, and it's, he's not lying. But when bad news comes in or bad poll numbers, bad data, whatever it is, he can't process it, and he has to figure out what his mind works in a different way than yours or mine or most people, and he, he makes – you know, he kind of massages it or exaggerates whatever it is to make it better than it is so he can process it. And then he puts it back out to the public. So okay, that's, I understand so, what so you're saying. So going to the rally, he doesn't think he's hurting people. He wouldn't, uh, okay. he wouldn't go there intentionally trying to get people infected, especially the people that love him. Of course, and that's what rallies. I'm trying to say. Yeah. So he just doesn't, it's not an evil intention. He just, his mind just doesn't work like okay. a person. Okay, I, I, I can relate to that. And okay. then your other question is basically what, about the lefties, the CNN, how they switch their mode from the end of January, not. But they want it virus. both ways. You can't have it both ways. It's got to be. You have to either say that you have to acknowledge he did a great job, and we were wrong by shutting the country to ch- the airline flights to China, and then afterwards Trump then at, w- th- didn't acknowledge how bad it was, and then attack him for it. But you can't have it both ways. That's the point I'm trying to say. Well, I mean, they they for sure are going to attack him for everything he does wrong, and barely give him credit for anything he does right that I and mean, we all know that Even, that's why they get no credibility and, you know but i mean that's but that's just the way it goes i mean fox news that's, is kind of the, the same way on the other side they, you don't see them praising they're not the other way see how you if they make that, a right move now nah, the only one is so, like that is hannity like like trump i mean like tucker ex- calls out exactly. tucker calls out trump every exactly. all the time hannity is the only one on fox no no that's news not what you that's not what we're talking about that. we're saying praising the other side we're that obviously CNN will call out the left, the lefties, the politicians also as they much. Do. Are you when they'll name one time, ninety percent of the time, but if they fuck up, they will call them out. Insane, what I'm saying, bro. tell me, give me an We're example, talking about two different example. things. Yeah, give me one example they've ever called out anybody on the left for. Give me one example. I mean, one. Well, say, let's say, tell me something that somebody did on the left that was wrong. Okay, well, when they when the one senator was in a uh, oh, I, I, was, was Avenatti, right? He was going to be their next hero, their next president, right? Yeah. Remember, right. I was on Twitter really when they were yeah, we were, you were you were I calling was, the most evil human that ever lived. I he remember was the that. worst you had, American, you, blah blah. blah. You had okay. him pinned down from day one. I'll okay. give you yeah. that hundred percent. Okay, when they finally figured it out, like six months, nine months later, when he started getting all these lawsuits and yeah. people accusing him of all this shit, they finally they called him out. He was on news every night on CNN. They've never called him out. What? They never called They've them never out, said we were wrong or anything. I, exactly. I mean, we, I could show you endless YouTube videos of CNN and MSNBC. MSNBC Matt, let me, let me ask out. you one question. Show me one thing in CNN where they said we were, these words, we were wrong about Avenatti. The things we said, we were off base. We should have said no, that's it. That's not what I'm saying. I, I've, I've heard I'm them so- say, I've heard them say that about Avenatti. They've said, they said uh, we had him pegged wrong. That's the okay. only thing I've heard. Very, that answers your question, but Valley. Yeah, I mean that's that's, well, that's but that's that, that was it. That was that was Brian Stelter. Of course, Stel- you don't watch CNN. No, I, but I do. No, that's the no, difference. That's like, yes, I I I watch CNN or or oh, I watch that? CNN a minimum of two hours a week because oh, there was a I think it's very clips. important. They were fucking stroking his cock yeah. every fucking episode. It's like, I, they sure I, were. The, best. the next president. He's so great. He's this. He's that. And then when the shit hit the fan, it was like maybe one negative thing in, a, in about a thousand episodes. Yeah. But anyways, okay, so let's so let's like let's pivot off Trump. We don't need to talk about that anymore. We get back to that later. Let's um. Oh, wait, wait, one thing before we get off Trump. What's your what would you rate him one to ten? The job he's done as president, first three and a half. Years? As president or yeah. of, of as honestly, president. I would raise it eleven out of a fucking scale of one to ten. Uh, okay. How do you like that? What, what what was your question, Matt? What would you rate Trump's job as president for the first three and a half years? Out one to ten. I think you played it out as president and what as was president. It, his job like is one president. being the worst, ten being the best. As him being a president, <laughs> not a to be, I'm, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with you. I don't think this country will ever get a better president as far as looking out for America. Right. That's what I'm being meant. honest. And doing what's best for the country, probably in another fucking fifty years, than okay. Trump. So I, I feel, I, I feel the same way. So I feel the same way. And ten. Do you? But, hey, hey, I, but he's made a lot of mistakes, I, but they're little Mike, mistakes. Mike, let me put something out there. <laughs> the, the, the politics has been a game. I love you guys. See, li, listen to me one second. This is great. Politics, That's why we have you on here. <laughs> politics has been a game 
for the last hundred years between Republicans and conservatives. Yeah, my dad's they, been the same thing since he was born. They get on TV, they let each other lie, they say what they want to say, they control everything. When Trump first got elected, even the Republicans were against him because they knew he wasn't a Republican, true Republican. They couldn't control him, and he was going to fuck up the whole game plan. Absolutely. Look what Paul Ryan elected, did to him. He, he changed politics forever. He infiltrated politics. And now, when they knew he was for real and that he had a great following, a lot of Republicans got behind him. And what he's doing, what I feel he's doing, is trying to put America in the best place it can be. Like if the president of Brazil or the president of China or the president of Russia, they want what's best for their country first. Then we could worry about other countries. Then we could worry about doing this. Then we could worry about doing that. That's what Trump wants to do. And I don't see, and you have a lot of Americans feel the same way. And when he first got elected, a lot of them didn't want to say that. This time around, different game. Everybody's going to stand behind him. And, and you're going to have a lot more people proud to say it. Now, with that said, right. when I said he's a 10 or whatever. Three. When, okay, when I said, my when I give him a 10, you have to understand that that is, there's a lot of things I hate about what he's done. Like, like the tweets, well, that's okay? fine. the it's attacking always... people, the attacking people with the yeah. tweet, tweets, I think is absolutely horrible. No president it's hilarious, ever. It's it is funny. Hilarious. I mean, the, the, it's the, hilarious. The, I'm not going to say right. the, the, the Romney <laughs> tweet the other day was the, the <laughs> second greatest tweet ever put out by a president it's of all so time. non-presidential but what it was, was his romney hilarious. tweet i missed okay it. so he said he said congratulations mitt romney has tested <laughs> negative for coronavirus <laughs> yippee i just jumped out of my chair Did he really I'm, say so, yeah, <laughs> I'm so happy for <laughs> a failed <laughs> for a failed presidential candidate who's even worse as a u.s senator but hey as he's a rhino oh so God. he's my friend was his exact tweet let I, me tell I mean, you it, something it was funny it's lie. hilarious. I agree, though. It's so, so you, it's so bad. bad. It's bad. Just you know about Ra of a Romney uh, voting for impeachment. So Trump, like he can't handle bad news. He can't handle somebody disagreeing with him or confronting him with, with logic or facts. So as soon as somebody does that, like Romney or like a reporter that gets in his face, he it's like literally that person is dead to him, and he he can't help yeah. can't process it. He cannot face. Somebody telling well, him that ask, he's not right let me, about Let me ask you this. Yes, Matt. thin skin. I, I, I agree. I, I agree. We all know he's a New Yorker. You're from New York. You understand New Yorkers, right? Yep. Okay. 100%. So, let, so let me ask you this, Matt. Okay. Then this is what Tucker's been saying since the, the Wuhan thing got put out, like when it came out in January. So he wait, said, for the purposes of this TV show, are we calling it the, the Chinese virus? Or are we calling it <laughs> no, the, he's a, he, the, he's the called, coronavirus? No, he's, he's back to the coronavirus. By it's the way, show. Tra- it, Trump is back to the coronavirus. Oh, okay, he's, okay. So he's right, he so he obviously <laughs> talked to Xi Jinping, and they're probably okay. they probably have the, the right. vaccination being sent his way for him to not call it because soon it's going to be the New York City virus because the, right. most of the cases in the world are going to be New York City. Just, yeah, you know. exactly. So so here here's my question. So this is what Tucker been saying since the middle of January all the way through. He kept saying, "Your politicians do not care about you. They do not care if you die. This is a horrible virus, and nobody on the left." on any media is talking about it. He said, all they are concerned about is impeachment 24 seven when they already know the results, which is hundred percent true. They already knew the results of impeachment. It was always going to be guilty in the house, innocent in the fucking Senate. So why'd they put the country through that? They did it to try and damage him politically. Why this whole virus was going. So if you think about it, like he said, Trump was, was so concerned with for the last six months by trying to fight impeachment that he wasn't quite on top of it when it came to the virus. That's it. What's your opinion of that? Matt? Are you asking me? Yeah. Okay, so the impeachment was a loser from the beginning. You right. know, I was very vocal about that. Even right. though, for, for sure, I believe he deserves to be impeached for some of his actions. There's, but, it's, but not uh, for that. Not for what they were looking for. It wouldn't be good for the country to impeach him. It was a, a worthless case they had. They knew they weren't going to win. Even even Nancy Pelosi, I don't give her a lot right. of credit, but I agree. She's, she's not dumb. She she tried to guide them through that. She thought it was a loser. She thought it was going to hurt him in the long run. Right. And it probably will. I think it's uh yeah. you know it, it hurts them in. a lot That's more true. than it hurts she him. She caved into the far left, and and the, what what they were. No, she didn't have a choice. I mean, she's got the entire. Imagine being a reasonable, a, a reasonable lefty and trying to fight the entire far left. Matt, what like she that. Think she's but the far left, 
The problem is she can't defend Trump because Trump's she's not agreeing with Trump. She's just saying, look, the strategy is a loser. It's not good for us to, to go but through. But if you watch, if you watch, reason with them. if but you look now, that. how everybody how everybody coalesced behind a fucking walking dead person in Joe Biden. OK, it's because they had nobody else to coalesce behind. I don't well, understand why they didn't, but it's an embarrassment. And the, the truth of the matter is, is they're now finally realizing that all those left left positions that they were going with every Democrat debate on was just the fucking 10 percent on Twitter and 80 percent of the people of the tweets on Twitter being done by 10 percent of the people. And they were listening to all that. And the country was nowhere. I kept saying the country is five degrees left or five degrees right. They're not. For open borders, fucking get rid of ICE, get rid of CBP, fucking let anybody in, let all the drugs in. They're not for that. And then they realized it, but they had nobody left to, to nominate, so they had to fall back on Biden. And that was all because being pulled by Twitter and the far left. And now they wait have to, to, wait, my you know? Twitter as a fuck button in my car. What'd you say, computer? Wait. Twitter as a fuck button in my car. <laughs> <laughs> computer Thank you, computer. Wait till you see what goes on in the next couple of months when Biden falls apart. Well, he's That's already has. They're already looking at replace no, him. You, no, want, no, no. you guys want to talk about great. that and your bets that you have, All Matt? Right. Well, let's let's lead up to Biden. So lead, lead up to now. But okay. The funny thing is with the primary, the Democratic primary, there were um, three or four candidates that people really got behind and really inspired people, even right. though. I can't stand Elizabeth Warren. She she at least inspired a whole bunch of people. But she destroyed okay. her own campaign. Okay, but that, that's what I'm saying. But she yes. inspired people. Bernie yes. Sanders inspired a lot of people. I agree. Uh, I even agree. Mayor Pete inspired people. I agree. But totally. the funny thing is they went with the guy that doesn't inspire us, no one. No, <laughs> no, no one dislikes Biden, but no one is no. inspired by him. So now you right. have a candidate that is doesn't have that unlikable thing that Bernie had or Elizabeth or Pete or even Trump. So nobody dislikes him, but he doesn't inspire anyone. So I, that that has me worried yeah. that it's going to totally be tougher to beat Trump because Trump inspires a lot of people. No, I agree. And and like me and my girl were talking yesterday. She's like, if you look at every presidential candidate going all the way back to to Reagan, okay, uh, you know, I was young. Uh, I don't remember Ford, but I do remember Reagan because I was uh, like twelve years old or whatever. But if, if she she said this yesterday. Every single one who became president inspired people in some way. Clinton inspired a nation. Okay, true. B Bush was it because uh, the the younger didn't one really. uh, didn't really inspire, but he was, you know, that because they after the you know it, you know if you look at politics, like every eight years, it always there's a reason it always flips because people want to want to have different. Exactly, they get sick of of one way or whatever, and so. You know, you had Clinton who inspired everybody, probably the second sure. greatest speaker of our time. Then came Obama, the greatest speaker of our time. OK, sure. there will never be a better two speakers than them. And they inspire people. Trump, not a greatest speaker of, of our time, but because he is like he acts like one of us, like we talk every day. He was able to connect and relate with those people. Say what, what everybody right. felt. Biden. He's, gen he's genuine. So right. As much as much as Trump lies. Right. lies to himself he is completely genuine no so i agree he says something he doesn't care he doesn't give a fuck what you think what i think what the person next to him thinks. when he's saying even it if, i think he means the it. person standing next to him knows he's lying he doesn't give a fuck he's gonna say what he thinks right and you know he believes it in his head i i, Let's I, I open do up believe the that phone you know some, what you, you say, guys computer? can keep talking shit but we should allow some calls in all right. Oh, yeah. Let's let's, 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 let's put some calls. phone calls in. Let's open up let's the phone Let's talk about line. Mikey's gold pillow. How fucking rich is Mikey? Mikey? How <laughs> rich Holly. is he? Look at I, mean, I, I mean, he's got to be rich. Uh, gold lines pillow? Let That's us know when the first phone calls are coming in, Danny, and hook us up. Meanwhile, we'll talk phone. shit while the phones are opening. So uh, uh, tweet out that the phone lines are open to everybody who wants to call in there, buddy. Um, and, 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 and you know what? Uh, uh, Mike, uh, Let's talk about uh, shut up so I can play the phone calls promo. Okie dokie. The mouthpiece. If you'd like to take part in our phone call segment, you can give us a call at 702 329 0480. And if you're a snowflake or a pussy and you don't want to talk to me, you can email me at mouthpiecepodcast at gmail.com. Also, follow me at the Mouth Mattiso on Twitter for times that our call-in segment will be 
live. Boom. All right, everyone. Time for our phone call segment. So everybody out there wants to call in, give us a call. 702-329-0480. And uh, call on in. You can talk to me, Matt Glantz, Mike Dentil. You can ask us all kinds Dentali. of questions. Then Tolly. Then Tolly. Then Tolly. Then Tolly. Then Tolly. I got Dentil. it. Then Tolly. He's not like a Gentile. He is well, a Gentile. I don't want, Dentali. you know, I, I, hey, is that like, when I call him Dentil, is that like if you call Cuomo fucking Fredo? Is that like the same thing? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. That wasn't funny, Mike. I love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you have to admit that was pretty funny when he attacked you. He goes, uh, I'm not no Fredo, man. My name that was is Chris Cuomo. That I'm was, an that, anchor I'm, on Fox News. You want to take it was, outside? That was funny, but don't ever call me Fredo again, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so it is derogatory. 100% it's derogatory. Okay, well, how come everybody's saying, no, it's not derogatory? He the, just made that you up. You know what was funny, though, is Cuomo's, like, so articulate and well-spoken in the fucking gimme. I actually came out. Like, I like him. I, are you, honestly, I kind of like him, too, but he's so far left. It's sickening, too. Oh, his brother's far left. Uh, he's not near as far. I, I watch his show at least three, four times a week. So I, yeah. I, I, I mean, he's not bad, but they still cater to the left. It gets me more. Well, they have to. They want, he, you got to remember, he has bosses. Bosses are still yeah. in control. You know, if he True. can... He can't, it, one, it, you know, I'm sure every time he says something good about Trump, he gets fucking like fined after the show. So I mean, oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, w- w- why don't we say one thing, though, that's 100% true? Okay. Go ahead. Whenever the media leans left hard, you know, does anybody disagree that you get maybe one or two stations? Fox News and uh, One American News are probably the only two news channels that you could get a conservative point or more of a non-biased viewpoint on the uh, news. Agree or disagree? Um, I think Fox is very centered, except for Hannity and Laura. I think they're far right. I'll tell you the truth. Totally what, what's the most centered is CNBC. Not many people watch like a, a stock market channel, but you'll get you'll get some political commentary during the day, and mostly business. But a- anything very, very owned centered. by NBC can never be centered. Sorry. <laughs> It's very sector, but CNN is, is for sure left, and MSNBC is way left of them, and Fox is is far right, guys. It's not. But why do you say Fox is far right? What makes them far right? I mean, they're just constantly railing against abortion, and religious rights, you know, stuff that guns, stuff that it just you could not complete your call. Don't appeal to. Please me. try again. That's far right. What do you mean rally against? They are definitely for. They're definitely against abortion. I agree. Yeah. But. But they don't get on the air and say abortion is bad, abortion is this. They the thing about MSNBC and CNN, they constantly have people that are giving their opinion, opinionated news, not facts. That is always left leaning. Okay, like, I'll, I'll, you, I'll give you my that it makes me uh, cl- classify them as far right versus just right. And this is and I do this for for everyone if, when they're on the right, whether they're far right or right. This is my distinction. If they present the, the um, abortion, well, we got a call. We got a call coming. Okay. In. Hold on. Should we pause them or should we finish this real quick? Welcome to the mouthpiece. Is Mike? Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good, man. Who's this? Yeah, uh, this is Billy. Uh, I'm calling from Berlin. Hey, Billy. How's it going out there? What's up, Billy? You're on the yeah, uh, mouthpiece so with um, so Matt Glantz and Mike Dent- Dentali. I got it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know who those guys are, man. Maybe you can fill me in. All right, they're they're a couple of they're 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 um, Americans, what, just one, straight one, white a white a male Americans. One's a, a top American poker player. Another oh, one, shit. Is, another one oh, is po- it's a poker player oh, that is not very good that we make fun of. That's what I thought, mate. <laughs> that Matt's nice, not man, that nice, bad. Nice. Stop. Uh, what, what, I, I gotta, one gotta, lost to a girl head up. Oh for 50 my grand. god. And the other one has won a bunch of high rollers and a bunch of. Well, I'm never going to live that down. It's going to be fucking 20 years not. later. I'm gonna hear about <laughs> All right, man. What's your question for us? <laughs> All right, that's pretty nice. Uh, can can we talk about uh, uh, something other than politics? Is that possible? Uh, sure, absolutely. Sure. What are you looking for a hand review, uh, Billy? Recently, what, what uh, I was here <laughs> quarantined with my boy. Uh, he he came uh, from London to stay for a few weeks and. Uh, okay. We uh, we listen to a lot of mouthpiece podcasts, 
and uh, we were interested in Lane back to back flack. That was a good episode. Oh yeah, and okay, uh, so... yeah, that was that that we listened to like ten or fifteen episodes, which was pretty sweet. Um, Billy, let guess, me ask you this: Do you have a question about? Yeah, Ted Forrest. Like, we wanted to know more about Ted Forrest. Like, what's going on with that guy? Okay, I'll. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Could I? Could, could I just say lost thing? Mind. Can I say thing? Why Ted Forrest? Well, he wants to know. Okay, he wants to know. so Ted Forrest. Uh, the me, latest, and, me, and, is, me and Mikey know him well. I could give you the latest information on Ted. Okay, I um, <laughs> I don't want to. I, I will say that Ted is uh, doing better now. Um, he was really financially in a really bad spot for a long time, Be- not because of poker, because of uh, his addictions in the with well all kinds of addictions. Let's just go there, and um, oh, right. and uh, he's doing much better now. Uh, I talked to him recently. He's living on the East Coast, and he uh, he uh, got a little bit of money. He's got a, a new baby, and he's uh, he actually showed his face over at the LAPC about a month ago. So. Um, uh, things are looking up for him, and uh, he's uh, he's gone through a lot. And I always pull for Ted. Best I can say. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we 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 listened to a lot of episodes, and uh, the the stories from Lane Flack and you were were particularly funny to us. Um, right. And so I guess. Well, you yeah, know, I'm going to try guys, and get some more you guys people on. Talked a lot about Ted, so we wanted to know about Ted. I guess. You well, Lane's it. one of the funniest people in poker. Yeah. Lane everyone, is everyone will agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we we only really saw him like back in the day, one or two episodes of High Stakes Poker and stuff like that. But uh, Lane was yeah, the best no really limit player. He was uh, he was uh, he was uh, prop uh, prop betting a lot right back in the day. Well, I can tell you, I, w- I went out with him uh, to a club about four months ago in Vegas, and I can tell you, he still got yeah. it. He is a funny motherfucker. <laughs> he still does got it, you know. And people don't realize <laughs> as old from, as he is, he still got it. From two thousand to about two thousand and five. I will say, or 98, yeah, 2000, 2005, there was no more feared poker player in No Limit Hold than Lane Flack. I mean, every time Ted Forrest oh, staked let, him in yeah, a tournament, okay. he won, He literally won, like, or his final table every tournament that Ted Forrest used to put him in. So, uh, you know, I, <laughs> mad props to yeah, Lane. Uh, yeah. He's a funny guy. And uh, we're going to get more people on to talk a lot about poker and, and all the old thing of poker. But, you know, with all the crazy things going on in the world, we're trying to, like, decipher through all the news trying to talk about different things in poker and uh and uh so that's kind of why we're in right now because there's really not much to talk about there's no poker going on well yeah i mean uh you know uh you know there's not much to talk about uh as well for me but uh you know it's nice to hear some poker stories from uh from the mouthpiece uh you got it we'll we'll tell you some we're gonna jump off the air with you take Um, some more calls and then we'll talk some poker stories for you okay all right then all right, thanks for calling. Should I appreciate we, it. Should we finish the far right versus right before we go to the next call? Computer, right. can we do that? More calls, Mikey. Gotta <laughs> do some call backs. All right, let's call. Let's call you him. Fuck. <laughs> Whatever the computer wants. We're calling somebody now? We call him back because they missed a the call. Oh, gotcha. We're on the line. Hello. Welcome to the mouthpieces, Mike and Matt and Mike. What are you doing? Hey, guys. Yeah. Who this? My question Who's, is: Who this? this is Brian, Brian, Brian from Orange Brian. County. Um, my question for you guys is: There's a story going around. It's um, true, for sure, it's true. Politics and the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, um, <laughs> about the coronavirus, about China doing this on purpose, and I know this is going to go around for God knows how long, and. Good question. That is a good question. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of? I'm trying to do this. Is that your entire question? That's. I'll tell to you what. Control the market. What, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you that question back. What's your opinion on it? And then I'll give you ours. We'll each give you ours. My opinion on it is that it's possible. That's all I can give on it because they have controlled markets. They've they've put countries in situations. Um, where they kind of hold them hostage because they do Correct. own a piece of their economy, just like they own Correct. a lot of stuff here in our economy. But at the same time, I know there's there's ideas against it that China wouldn't be that ruthless or this, that, and the other. And so well, I'm kind of in the they, middle, they, you know, coming up I'll, hearing I'll, people's I'll ideas. I'll give you my opinion, on, uh, and, and then the, these guys could give you yours. Um, dictators have killed five, 10 million people for less, Okay. 
if a million people were to die, would it, would, would it shock me that they did it? And they were able to have economic dominance in the world. Would it shock me? Not one bit. Um, I, whether they did it on purpose or not. Okay. The thing that's most important that everyone needs to know is they covered it up for three weeks. They didn't let the CDC or the world trade, uh, world health organization in to get the data. They never warned us about how serious this could be. So the world could be prepared. So whether it was done on purpose, they are still responsible for not getting the word out about how bad it was. That, that, that's, that's my answer to that. What do you, what's your opinion? Uh, I agree. We'll go to Matt next. Yeah, Matt. Uh, it's, it's just a natural occurring uh, phenomenon happens every 80 to hundred years or something where some kind of, yeah, that's what's most likely. Yeah. I agree. Right. And the other thing is the rumors that you first start hearing about when it came to the China's China created this virus is that it had some DNA or qualities in the virus. I don't know what they're called because I'm not a scientist, but that was, that were a copy of HIV or, or SARS or, or Ebola or something like that. So they said that must be scientifically engineered. And those turned out not to be true. Scientists show that that's not true. It doesn't have any of those characteristics. characteristics. So there's really no proof or evidence leading to the fact that it was a man-made virus. That, that is true. There is no proof of that. What's your opinion there, Mr. Dentali? Uh, I'm honestly torn. I'm 50, 50. I think there's good arguments on both sides. I, I think yeah. it's possible. So you're an atheist on the issue. Uh, I wouldn't say atheist. Uh, atheist is, doesn't believe in God, but uh, <laughs> no, I on this issue, way, you're I mean, an atheist, Mike. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly believe it could go either way. I think that, um, basically, um, there's a good chance it was started in China. Uh, they could have tried containing it and maybe set it out as warfare. And maybe it got let loose uncontrollably. There's a lot of different reasons why I think the way this started. I mean, nothing's proven. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right. but I, I think anything's possible with this. I think. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I, I think that I've listened to shows that shows that it was definitely made in that wet market. Um, but I've I've done a lot of other studying, and uh, I'm gonna I'll jump off the phone with you here, and I'll we'll talk about it. But guys, and, uh, but guys think about this logically. If it was Iraq, okay. Iran, or North Korea that, that made this virus, you know, maybe that there's reason that why they well, want to do that. Just remember who. who okay, well, thing why would China want to do that? China is really China is on their way up. China's basically controlling the world in 20, 30 mm-hmm. years. They're going to take over the U.S. They're going to be Are you much insane? bigger, more powerful country. Mm-hmm. So they're on their way up. They don't want to mess up things the way they're going right now. Well, they were, they're so already the second most powerful country. I, I, I could show you reasons why I disagree with that, and I'll show you reasons why I do agree with that. So, anyways, I mean, Matt, Matt, you got to understand if they're on their way up, why not accelerate it? Why not look for a better path? I Seems mean, like a pretty risky get, path. Risky. Let, let, I mean, a, a risky. let go of a, a virus that affects all humans. Uh, I'm going to read what? something. Out. I'm going to read something out to, 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 and you guys could have your opinions on it here in a little bit. So, Mike, anyways, let me ask you one thing. Wait, Mikey, let me. Okay. We got, we got, we got still a guy on the phone here. Anyways, um, <laughs> okay. So, any other questions for us? No, no, I want to say one last thing, and I'll I'll leave. Um, you got okay, Brian. Okay, assholes, Matt, more I like, calls. I like the scientific method from Matt. Right. And then I like the that we're open to thinking, and I like that to come together. But I just think it's still possible because I think you have to bring America down before. That's you can what, take that's it my over. opinion. Even though, even though cut I know the head of the snake. Economy, okay, Brian, if it's possible, what do you again. what do you make the odds of it of it being real? The odds. Yeah. What are the odds that it's man made? In your mind, man made, I would still have to put it up high. I'd say like 25 to one, 20 to one. Okay. So 4%, you're saying 4%. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I got, I got it higher. I got, I got it about 50, 50. It just sounded crazy, but it's fun. (laughs) I think it's, I I, I usually think it goes either way. Hey, we got more calls. Got to go. Thanks Brian for the call. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Matt, let Matt, let me ask you one thing. If China did start it, are they going to make themselves look guilty or are they going to make it look like uh, what it's doing now? Like, oh, my God, you know, obviously they're not going to. Hey, you guys, say, hey, in, in the middle of the phone calls, when I, I'm gonna, when I give it off to you, you guys talk and then quit talking. And I'm going to go back to the, to the person so, we, we, so I communicate with them, okay? Yeah, got All right, we got another call coming. Hey, it's Bob. Hey, Bob, this is Mike here at the mouthpiece. How you doing? Mike, Matt, and What's Mr. Up, Dentali. You got a bunch of us on here, man. What's going on? How's it going today? 
Ah, pretty good. I've been uh, going back and forth with Matt on Twitter uh, about the coronavirus on his daily updates in the U.S. at noon. Right. And um, my big question is, is what do we do for, you know, four weeks from now or next or next fall? I, I have a hard time wrapping my head around how the virus, you know, came over to the U.S. or spread around uh, the globe from, you know, from China. And now we're just going to four weeks from now it's just going to go away and it's not going to flare back up like it is right now. That so, we, yeah, that's not know, going to happen. Is, go ahead. It's not go going ahead. away. We talked about that a little bit ago. It's, it's coming back in the fall, which is why they want to have a vaccine ready for October because it's here they can't, permanently. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, here. It's, it, it's like the flu. This virus will, will be going around every year and we got to make sure we have right. a vaccine. And, and for if it. that's the case, like I don't understand the flattening the curve because it's, you know, I'll explain that to you now. right now, okay? We have 974,000 hospital beds in the United States, okay? Which 600,000 of them are already occupied. That means we have 374,000 available beds in the entire country. One out of 10 people who get infected with this are going to need hospitalization. That means we can't have more than 3.7 million people hospitalized at one time with the virus or the hospitals 100%. will be overrun and then every they'll be like Italy where anybody over 80 they have to leave them to die because we don't have exactly. enough ventilators and that's what they're looking and to that's avoid. why we had to close the country down does that make right sense no I, I understand I understand that but what how does you know four weeks from now or next fall how are we not in the exact same you know predicament it's not like those numbers we're gonna we're gonna go through all the numbers right now and we're not going to have the same exact problem. Then. That's OK. Like, I understand you, what you're saying. OK, so first of all, there's 340 Trump, million people in the country. OK, now I'm going to I'm going to answer that. OK, Trump is sugarcoating it to the population by giving them hope about being out by Easter. Everybody in the right knows that it's uh, that we are quarantined for six weeks. OK, period. Minimum. Not my sex, I don't agree with you. Mike. Not all of us. The middle America and other hot True. places. No, but True. in the major cities like New York. And Correct. California and Nevada, with the, with all the spread in, in the in the with the with the uh, casinos, we are not going anywhere for six weeks. But Trump is trying to give people optimists and be and, and say, hey, we'll be open in some places. And of course, the media wants to attack him for it. But the bottom line is, it, it's it's important to give people hope. If you tell everybody right now. You guys are stuck in the house for two months. We have fucking crime throughout every street, looting throughout every Mike, street. Mike, what did, what, did, what did Trump say about is going to be even worse than the virus? Depression, suicide rate, people Right, the work. suicide rate. It, there's going to be more people die of suicide than that are going to die from the virus. But the you thing want is, to be president, yeah. someone that's going to say fucking doom and gloom? Or someone that's going to say there's a possibility we'll look at the open? He's given positive thoughts. He's telling us what he would like to do. Right. Uh, it's a good shot. It might happen. And if it doesn't, we'll deal with it three weeks from now. But yeah. to say doom and gloom, it's it's ridiculous. Doom Why and would gloom would be disastrous for the country. You imagine the people that are in their house right now oh, that, yeah. that if I you mean, told I them for two months, I you're going to be locked up in your house. And not making oh, I money. I own I a business. Agree with that, but I'm, just, I'm just thinking about the economic standpoint of it, of, is that, you know, we we couldn't afford to shut down for, for this long and then we're going to have to no. do it again. Like the numbers... OK, it so it doesn't add up to me. You, you, you got to understand we're not going to shut down again because by the time what he's saying, it's not going to go away. By the time but the, uh, the, we get the, it up and run, we're going to have a vaccine. We're going to have. And, and the summer know, months will kill it off. We'll kill off most of the spreading. 100 the percent. There's a lot of different factors that are going to attribute to it just going in a positive direction. Okay. But Matt, keeping the think? economy closed down is not going to happen. Matt, what's your opinion? He asked. So the question is, what what is flattening the curve? What, is it, what does it mean? And why are we doing it? So flattening the curve, really? No, no that's not the question. He wants uh, to know why. We're, we no, he knows, understands that. Why in four weeks are they talking about uh, what's going to change when we reopen the country? Let's even if it's six weeks from now. Okay, right? well, it's all related to flattening the curve. So right. we gave ourselves more time. We've all quarantined, so there's going to be less people who get the virus, which means less. A ten percent of them need a hospital visit, or three percent of them need an ICU. It's going to be less and less, but it's good. But it's going to continue longer, right? If we just let the virus go right now, there would be a huge, huge spike in a couple of weeks of maybe I don't know, 10 million cases that needed hospital beds, where we only have a million in this country, right? And instead of that, 
where we're just flattening out the curve. Maybe we only have we only have a million or, or two million that need hospital beds this month, another million or two million next month, and we're and we're still going to be over capacity, but at least it's somewhat manageable. Whereas if you just let the virus go, even whether it's now or in four weeks, that there's going to be some huge spike. Or that at that period, whoever gets sick at that time is going to be a, a much much more greater risk, a much higher multiple of, of dying than they would at any other time right. if we don't flatten the curve. Exactly. So it's all flattening the curve is not making the virus less dangerous. It's making the over hospitalization or the overrun of hospitals uh, more dangerous by not flattening the curve. And also not being prepared, right. not having the right amount of ventilators, being prepared for something like this. So, we were totally non prepared. We don't have the equipment. We weren't the, the way our drugs are being formed out, the way the masks are being made in China. Right. It's about getting us. To, it's about getting us to summer is what it's about. So, well, his, his question is, why is it all right? Why are we doing this? And then we're going to open up in a few or four weeks, whatever, again, and then the same thing's going to happen. It gives us more time. The, we can build up more capacity. The Army Corps of Engineers, other each state's building up more capacity where we're going to probably have twice as many IC units, ICU units, or maybe uh, I would say twice as many hospital beds, but maybe like. 10 times as many ICU units right, by the summer. Virus. And yeah. so by by that time, if the virus, you know, slowly increases, we'll be able to manage it hospital wise. But there's still going to be, you know, a ton of deaths, a ton of people oh, yeah. in hospitals. It's it's dangerous virus. But the fact is right. for anyone, you know, sitting here, Mike is a little more risk than than probably I am, and I'm probably a little more risk than Natalia is, but if we're all likely at some point to get the virus in the next few years, but well, none of us are likely to die from it. That's, right. that's just that's just the fact. Yeah. No. Computer. There's, there's still yeah, no, behind I, it. I, I would agree with that. I, I just think, and I, I think the answer is is the, the more ventilators. And right now, you know, if we're if the, to me the flattening curve doesn't work because let's say at, at this point right now, if you don't increase the ventilators, because let's say right now in this well, day, well that's what that's the whole point they're that's increasing what, the ventilators. that's what they you have ford you have all the car companies right. you have uh You're all producing time. ventilators they're getting they're producing they expect we're to have a hundred thousand right in new york city within the yeah, next, by, within two weeks so we're you do have the yeah. the the, 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 the private sector are are like building ventilators yeah 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 yeah, I know. It's just, it's hard for me. I keep going in circles because I own a business and I just think about what the economy is going to be. And Oh, it's it going to be a catastrophe. It it's going to be, it's, that's like, I cry every night for the people that live in the real world. Like, not, not like Mike has his own business, but like me and Matt, like we, we don't live in the real world and, and we're going to be fine. Yeah. But I got, you got to care about other people. And I, I, my heart bleeds to all these people, especially in Vegas that work in the service industry, casino industry that live off tips. You know, they're going to, you know, are they going to get, uh, well, I mean, they made. It, I guess that they that they only said that they made uh, less than ninety five thousand a year because most stuff is tipped. So they'll get the twenty, the we'll twelve hundred. Yeah, we'll so, get out of this, it's, it's important to realize it's a it's a no win situation for everyone. For everyone, and it's basically everyone's got to come together in the country and work with each other. And uh, hopefully, you know, it's just what's the 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 least bad situation of what we can make it. That's pretty much the well, least I agree. bad. Not not we're not making. It's not going to be good for anyone. But how do we make it least bad for the most people? And that's pretty much what we're doing. Exactly. And, and we're doing a good job. Yeah. I, All I, right. I think we are. We got another, we got other calls we got to get to. Any other questions? You all get, you good? Yeah. That's good. Have a good one. All right, man. Thanks for tuning Thanks. in and listening to the mouthpiece. Good talking on Twitter, buddy. All right, man. All right, man. Later. All right. We got more calls. Computer, where's the next call? Come, Come on, on, man. Computer, safe. Fuck. There it is. This computer's a piece of shit. He's a fuckhead. <laughs> Fuck you. Computer, can you screen the calls before they go on? Make sure they're home. Fuck you. Okay. you good? Hello? No. Welcome Give to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. What's going on? Turn, turn your volume down a little bit. Hello? Oh, I turned off. Okay. No. All right, man. How's it going? Who's this? Frank the Tank. Oh. Yeah, who's this? Frank. Frank the Tank. What's up, Frank Frankie? Holy tank. shit, Frank the Tank. What up, brother? Frankie. <laughs> Frankie. 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 What do you got for us, brother? Look, I got me, Matt Glantz, uh, and fucking Dead Tilly on here. Yeah, oh, you said his name again. I was going to say hi to Den Dentil. 
<laughs> Dentali, guys. Dentali. It's not Dentali. Oh, I got closer. I got to Dentili from Dental. From Dentali. Think, think of tamale, Dentali. Oh, hot tamale. I eat exactly. lots of those. That's easy there to you remember go. now. There you go. Hey, I need to get a drink. Ask these guys a question, Frank. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, it wasn't it wasn't a question, really. I don't, I don't know if I can go. <laughs> First off, it's really uh, interesting listening to all three of your different opinions. I I like a lot of stuff all three of you are saying um can i um can i bring up go off to a different subject real quick yeah sure go for it frank we're here for you buddy okay um so with of course with the covid19 going around the world i just wanted to put out there i am going to be doing a bicycle ride for charity to raise money for haven't exactly figured out, but probably for uh, people that have been medically affected badly from the. You're going to ride a bicycle? Is that what you said? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to ride a bicycle, a road bike, of course. But oh, not, you did you know, say that. I thought I was hearing anything. things. <laughs> bicycle leaving, hopefully as long as it's okay with what's going on in uh in our country. I'm going to plan on leaving on Mother's Day, May 10th. And gonna ride from Las Vegas from my house to Jacksonville Beach Pier. Fucking, and, uh, that's a long way for your ass to fucking ride. You, you, you sure you're gonna? Where, live? where is that? Where's Jacksonville Pier? Where is that? Jacksonville, Florida, Mikey. You're oh, gonna ride your bike, field? Frank the Tank, Six the guy feet. that fucking drinks more fucking alcohol than anybody <laughs> I've ever seen in my life is going to my drive a bike. <laughs> From here Frank, yeah. to Jacksonville. And now, Frank, are there odds on how, what are the odds that you fucking die Mike, my, and fucking don't make it? I got one question, Frank. Are you going to do it holding a chicken wing? <laughs> I've, already, I've already been asked by people to have one uh, uh, dangling from my neck or something. So I, I guess I will. I guess I will. And I, I'll even, uh, if it raises more money, I'll even have a real chicken wing on my neck for oh my god you'll die from some other disease <laughs> <laughs> and hey, hey, it Frank, definitely will whatever be you do whatever you do i support you the south and, I'll, and i will donate a hundred percent i'll donate plus it too I, man plus plus i owe you money too frank so i'm gonna give you back the money i owe you and donate on top so let me know whatever you do I'm oh I'm not, I'm not i'm not i'm not sweating that um but it's just just in the initial works right now, um, of course, got to talk to somebody about how to set up uh, the thing for charity and all that. I've never done that, but uh, hey, are you gonna do it? Hey, Frank, are you gonna do what? Uh, uh, I got uh, here's a question for you. Are you gonna okay. do what, what Dan Blitzerian did? Are you gonna hire uh, uh, Lance Armstrong to train you to do this bicycle ride? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, um, I'm just planning at the beginning to maybe write five, six hours a day, maybe just five, just 50, 60 miles. And as long as uh, I get a couple of weeks into it, as long as I'm feeling fine, um, well, I'll keep you, doing that gonna... or maybe add a little, add a little more miles. It's, it's, it's not a race. It's to raise, raise money. Yeah. And, I uh, like it. I like it. There, I yeah. like it too, Frank. I'm with I, you. I'm 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 a, it. I'll be behind well, you. That's, we need more people well, like you to help, to care and help. Did, and, did, and for didn't Bill Zarian Plus, have, he cheated, but he, 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 he worked the system on the bet. Didn't he have a, like a van or something in front of him? So it was blocking. He was like drafting away. I'm just going well, to have a, I, I, a I just know that they him. had, uh, he had to do it in a certain amount of time, which I knew he'd make it. But as long it was like 24 hours or something, if he didn't die, I knew he did. But he, I mean, like, here's a guy that parties like a rock star and, and, uh, and, um, you know, does steroids and shit and had two fucking heart attacks. So I was just worried. How do you know he does die. steroids? Well, I don't know. He's always in the gym, fucking. He's the size of his fucking yeah. every arms time are somebody bigger than looks my good, But every time somebody looks good, they do steroids. I don't well, get I it. Just sore, sore subject for Mike. You know that, for oh, the is top. it? Yeah. Oh, well, I just, you know, I mean, he had two heart the attacks. Guy looks and, yeah, but the guy looks great. Uh, heart well, attacks, steroids don't necessarily. Well, he told attack. me, he said one of them was from steroids. He did. Uh, but well, I'm not saying he does them, but he did. He More had, like the HGH than steroids. Yeah, whatever. So, um, 
No, I mean, no, I, I, I listen. You guys are fucking a, savages. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my goodness. Have, Frankie, have buddy. Motorhome. What do you listen, just man? Um, motorhome, we miss you. Following me. You got it, man. How many followers you got yet? We're going to try and get uh, Frank the Tank followers. Everybody out there listening to the show. Right, tell us your Twitter so you can tell, tell us. Frank, hit us up on Twitter and we'll and we'll hook it up, man. And we got your back. Tell everyone who's listening to the show your Twitter. Your Twitter. You're Frank a good follow. Yeah, it's, uh, I forget the numbers. And I, I just gave my girlfriend the phone. It's okay, Frank, I'll let everybody uh, know because Frank's all right. not all there. It's Frank the Tank 52. Frank. Come prepared next time, buddy. Remember Frank your Twitter name next time. It's Frank the Tank 52. Um, Frankie, I got your back. I'll retweet it, my man. Yeah. yeah. So he's a he's one of the funniest yeah. guys in poker for all you guys out there who probably don't know him. Unless you're on the tournament circuit, you know who he is. He's a guy that always wins every tournament, but he's always got a chicken wing in his hand. And he's yep, trying to he's put great. a one-week-old chicken wing in everybody's faces <laughs> with fucking make some fucking fold their hands because they're running for their lives. And and most importantly, he's unique. Everybody has yeah. their own personality. One, he adds to the poker community 100%. One yeah. thing about it, Frank Tank is if he's in the room, even if you're 10 tables away, you know you're he's in the room. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. High five. At Bay 101, he bought the entire tournament alcohol and he paid for it all. That's, wow. He was trying to like figure out he gets everybody drunk. Maybe he, that's maybe that's how he wins all these tournaments. Does he have a gold pillow like Mike? Like the do, do you do that at every tournament, Frank? Is that how you win all these tournaments? You get no, them all drunk? No, Mike. Mike, the first the first time I did that was was two Choctaw WPTs ago, and I asked Vince Van Patten after the first week, so there were six hours left in the day. I asked him to announce that I would buy drinks for everybody for the rest of the day, and uh, within reason, you know, up to like twenty dollar glass of wine. Don't you know you can't order Louis Trez, but Right, Drink right, as right. much as you want. And I also asked Vince to say, which he did, uh, those of you that cannot drink and play well, then then please do not do it. I was just oh, okay. wanting people to have fun as long as they can handle it. What a well, good man. man. That was the, that's a good guy. That's, that's the, the, best, third, Frank. the third WPT that I've done it for. All right. And, uh, well, yeah, people had, had a good time. But the ride's yeah. going to be great. Going to have my girlfriend, Tony, and uh, I think two other friends in a big motorhome following me, so I'm not drafting off of anybody in front of me. And uh, well, you're not in I a rush to do off. it. It's not a time limit. So if somebody wants to, if you want to draft or have somebody in front of you, you're you're okay. <laughs> but listen, just no, no, stay no, safe. Let us no know. Let us know the whole entire um, the entire thing, and we'll uh, tweet it out on our uh, Twitter and on the mouthpiece, and we'll get, we'll raise some money for you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, thank Frank. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks, thank Frank. You. Get, this get, get back, get back to the, the subject you're on. Take care, man. All right, thank, thanks a lot, buddy. Computer, okay. do your Bye-bye. job. Let's go. Do your job. Computer. Why am I fucking sweating so bad? No more callers at the moment. We can call okay. some bitches if you want. All right, so let's get back to you guys. Let's decide if you guys are are right or far right to me. The, um, the, this is how I've always distinguished the people. This is just my personal opinion. If if somebody are, argues for abortion or against abortion on the right, and they say that the people on the left are for abortion, they're far right. I if they agree. argue and they say the people on the left are for the the woman's right to abortion or right to choose for abortion, they're far left. Then, I, then they're just right. Okay. Oh, I you see. understand the difference. But if they say yeah. they're that people on the left are for abortion, they're far right. You see, because there's no talking to those people. Because right. they think that they actually think that the people on the left are actually like pro. Yeah, we got another call. They want people okay. to be aborted. We got another call. Quiet. Be quiet, quiet, quiet. Silence. Hey, hey, hey welcome to the mouthpiece. Who's this? Uh, it's Bobby. How you guys doing? What's Bobby? Bobby? Bobby, Bobby, right? Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Okay. What's up, Bobby? Hey, how's it going? I, I, what's up, man? I played with Mike before. He always yells at people. Calls them dummies. Then, yeah, Dentali, obviously. Dentali, probably, right? No, yeah, yeah Dentali, for sure. Yeah, I like it though. They deserve it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, my my question is: um, everybody's so focused on Corona and you know people being like really really ill to the point where they can only call the hospital like when they can't breathe. But what happens if caller speak up? Like, Speak up a little Hello? bit, Bobby. Yeah, speak up. Oh, there on. you go. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a bad Verizon commercial. Yeah, it's all good. Um, and, <laughs> anyway, uh, like if somebody's really, really ill, they're saying like 
the only way you can call the hospital is if, um, you know, you, you can't breathe. And mm-hmm. that's the only reason. But I'm finding that if people are progressively getting sicker and sicker, like what's another thing that can happen? Pneumonia or your organs can shut down or. Well, here, well, what, here's what the thing. Stuff? Here's the thing. The reason why they say if you can't breathe, that means it's gone into your lungs. OK, that means you need to be hospitalized, need to be hooked, possibly hooked to a ventilator, get on stuff to try and attack the pneumonia. OK, because you will if you get to the point where you can't breathe, you will get pneumonia. And it's and that's where 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 the very serious people who need to be hospitalized. They cannot have people that are running a fever and are breathing fine and have a stuffy nose going to the hospitals because this is what we're trying to avoid. That's basically I get it. it. But but what if you're sick as shit and you're like practically dying and like you're okay, you're, then you should go to the hospital. Yeah. Heart well, failure well, Bobby, or some, yeah. What Bobby's trying to say is who knows if it's going to get, you know, really quick, worse, really okay, quick. They, they have this thing that says, if you hold your, your nose, close your nose. And if you can hold your breast for 30 seconds or 20 seconds, whatever, 20 seconds, I think yeah, it is. They, they already, Mike, they already said some people say they could do that and they still were really bad. No. Well, I've heard people have it. Yeah. I've heard people that have it, that have it. Hey, hey, Bobby, between me and you, if you, you know, your body, if you're, if you don't feel well and you feel like it's a little dangerous, just go to the fucking hospital. Obviously they don't want everybody swarming the hospital. Hey honey, is the heat on in here? They want to cater to the, the people that are worse off. It's so hot in here. But yeah, but Mike, worried, they're not. They're not allowed. They're saying they're not allowing it. Like the CDC, like you have to have like a certain protocol. Like you can't breathe. So now it's time to call. But if you're in, Bobby, Texas, where are you in New York City? Like, you're in New York, right? Huh? You're, you're yeah, in New, New York. York right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Well, they got New it. York. They got it. They have to make decisions like that because they don't have enough capacity. There's, and, that's just tough. Exactly. Yeah, uh, it's right now. It's uh, they, they the capa- It's going up. They're, they're almost at full capacity. Um, from everything I, I read, it they need to, they've gotten now. Uh, they need thirty thousand ventilators. They've gotten four yesterday and four today, and that means they need twenty two thousand within the next fourteen days. So if they keep getting four thousand a day, they're going to be fine. So. Um, but they, yeah, they, 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 they have to set up. They have to have people uh, working. You know, like yeah. What they're workers. doing is they're, it, the regular hospitals are moving all their patients to the uh, the uh, naval uh, hospitalization boat that they're pulling up in New York Harbor and the regular hospitals are going to be mo- going to be 90, which is a smart thing to do to have all the Corona people because they don't want people that don't have Corona going to hospitals sick about something else and then getting Corona. So uh, they're going to be moving almost everybody in the regular hospital beds to the, to the Naval ships and to uh, other, other parts. That's what Mike, I are you sure you don't have Corona? You're sweating right there, buddy. I, I think my girl, I'm going to go see the airs on You talk to him. i <laughs> I don't know. He's, I, he might have a fever and not know. Uh, so, Bobby, Bobby, you know, Bobby what part of New York? You don't even know if you have it. That's the problem. Some people don't even no. have symptoms. But the, so the thing is, eighty percent of people possible. that have it probably won't feel anything or, or have Bobby, very mild symptoms. Look at it this way: if you don't know you have it, then you don't have really nothing to worry about because it didn't progress. That way. You know, uh, other you than get it, it, giving it to other people, but that, that's the important word. Yeah, that, that's that's the bad part about it. Yeah. That's the bad part about so, it because you don't have symptoms and you're just spreading it. All right, yeah, Bobby. I mean, thanks I'm, for calling, buddy. I'm really scared. I mean, I hope you guys are all well and you know. You too, buddy. Take care of yourselves. All right, tweet at us. Right. Let us know how it goes. Be good, man. Get better, buddy. Yeah. Take care. All right, computer. Next person, computer. Let's go. Do your fucking job. Oh fuck. <laughs> no more callers. No more callers. So, Mike, Yo, so what, get... back to the abortion thing. What do you think? Do you think that people on the left want to abort babies and Matt, want one abortion, or you think they just want people to have the right to right. choose abortion? I, I, I'm going to give you my view on abortion. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I'm pretty much conservative. Um, I could be liberal in some areas. As far as abortion, I agree. I mean, if a girl gets pregnant, she's not ready to start a family. She, um, God forbid, she's raped. There's a lot of reasons where I could see no no problem with an abortion. But if you're going to have an abortion, you have one, two, three, four months to make that that uh, decision. Fucking nine months. I mean, that hits home a little bit, you know. Eight months, you're carrying a baby. It's almost, you know, it's... For me, it gets... I, I'm pretty, like, I, I could lean both ways. I'm not totally against it. 
Um, I think it is a woman's right, even though I'm a conservative, but I hate to see some women where they're like, yeah, you know, I had an abortion. It's great. I'm having another one. And they make light of it. Yeah, I have a friend like that, that it really bothers me. And and I'm pro-choice. Disgusting. Yeah, that's disgusting. And you're going to get some people that are just straight out animals, you know, and then you're going to get some people that value life, even at conception. But my opinion, um, you shouldn't force anybody to have a baby because especially if a girl's in 16 or 17 and you know, she's not ready to start a family, could ruin your family. Could ruin your, How the hell do we get to this future. subject? I, I never on my show ever talk about this. This is like one subject is like totally taboo. No, this, but, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty, uh, I, I would say maybe I could, I'm pretty, uh, I, um, I don't know. What do you call it? Uh, I'm pretty, uh, I, I wouldn't say conservative. I would say I'm pretty liberal on it, I guess. I don't know. On You're liberal question. on something, Mikey? Oh, yeah, boy. I mean, I never said I'm not. I mean, I don't say I'm a diehard conservative. For the fans, I'm uh, losing my voice from screaming. But how, how would people. you say you're you're a different liberal than most of the <laughs> poker players that are liberal? Most of the poker players, I, I you know what? I, I when I first got onto the scene, I, I had no idea how far left poker. They're brainwashed. They're, they're so, brainwashed. They're That's so why. fucking liberal. And then just my mind trying to put it together, I'm like, why is the majority of poker players? so left-leaning and liberal and then it kind of clicked it made sense they're fucking half of them are out of work half of them are how many of them are out of work attorneys that like oh, why? you don't even know the reason why the reason why is they went through high school their high school teachers are far left professors or far left teachers then if they went to ha- to two years of college they had to deal with far left fucking um college professors and that's why they're fucking brainwashed to think that way and they don't live in the real world. That's my opinion. There you go. I said. Somewhere. I mean, you're, you're very rarely going to find hardworking, conservative people playing poker. Most people play poker to make money. Uh, most conservatives already have a business and they're making money. So they have no desire to play poker. Someone like me, where I'm a conservative and I have a business, I'm a gambling degenerate. That's how I found poker. You know, I love to play blackjack. I love to gamble. It's my vice. And um, I kind of branched over to poker. And um, even though I have a very good, you know, understanding and I play well, I still gamble a lot. Maybe yeah, you play real well lot. against Kate Hall. So it was one on one. It was fucking, she flopped quads every hand. My Wait, why were, were you scared against her? I mean, I mean, you, you played like. Bad. You got unlucky. Ask her. I mean, Matt, I haven't watched maybe, it yet, Matt, but everybody said you played like the girl and the girl played like the guy. All right, I'm not holding back. Matt paid me 50K to take a fall. A lot of money. <laughs> Honey, my alarm just went off. Can you bring me my meds? Thank you. <laughs> he paid you 50,000 to dump it? <laughs> to take a fall, you know yeah. You know what's funny about I had Kate hundreds Hall? of thousand dollars on it. On, on who? We on Kate going, Hall? When we, when we were going back and forth, she was like, it's my money. I'm not back. Blah, 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 blah. She fucking went full force. And you know what? Turns out she was back. Of course she was like back. Like I said, but it's so funny how people I can't be honest. Plug in. If you're, if, if you're, like I, I'm gonna be fucking like a fucking chihuahua too. If someone's backing me. Yeah, I'll play you for four hundred thousand. It's not my money. I know. You know, put your own money. We'll see how much of a big mouth you have and how listen, much you're gonna play. I I always say the fucking Sam Grizzle line. You play your money the way you want. I'll play other money's, other people's money the way I want. So shut the fuck it's up. So it's so true, man. You know? And I tell everybody when and I, you know, I, I usually have at least I sell usually anywhere between 25 or 50 percent of my stuff. But even back in the days when I was really wealthy, I always sold pieces of myself in every tournament because and, and Helmuth has done the same. I don't think Phil Helmuth has had 100 percent of himself where he bought in in maybe any tournament in his whole life. Even the 1500s, he gives sells pieces of himself. It's just what he does, you know, and I, right. and I do the same. No. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, uh, I get it, but no reason to get on pieces, Twitter. But she just gave it her word that she wasn't for some reason. Right. There's no reason That's to get on of, Twitter uh, and fucking say you're not back. She's not, she's got all from what money. I hear. I don't want to bash her because I don't know, but a lot of people I know have bashed her about a lot of things. And, uh, Who, and Chad power. What Chad? <laughs> well, <laughs> Chad, I don't, Chad, just uh, listen, the bottom line is, is when somebody backs you and you fucking have a shot to win a hundred grand, and you lose 50 or 60 and you're 50 or 60 in makeup, you got to grind out. 
You know, it's not like he wouldn't help her with her bills as long as she grinds out. But she was like, no, I want to keep playing high. So he, they fucking yeah, I, don't, I don't know that dude, chat, but I heard from the grapevine. He really passes her heart. Oh, God, you don't like, even know what he says. Her. He yeah. fucking Chad, shred- kinda, And he really liked Chad. her before, by the way. That's how I met him. Chad. I met hey, her Chad. the day if with him. Listen- Chad, if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> call in, buddy. Little- I want to hear. I don't know you, but call Chad, in. Chad, I'm almost a little bit happy you got fucked. You know why? Because oh, wow. I remember coming to Maryland Live and I had Pocket Kings. And you put me all in with deuces like, you know, like you're fucking, we're going to run over me. Wait, wait, call- hold up. Computer, call Chad Power. <laughs> Mike has his number. And- and you call, oh, should we call dude. some bitches? And you hit it. And you should hit we it call some coming. bitches? <laughs> call Chad Power. Should we call some bitches? Let me ask him. I, I, me, I, I, I don't know, know the guy, so I do. Chad, Chad's a very. Uh, I got. I got to ask him. Yeah, I want to hear this. I got to hear all the all the dirt. What did he, he bet Listen. against you? He bet on Kate against you in the in the match, Mikey. Yeah, no. every you know it's oh, all shit. persona. He's been it's on the show before. Persona. Yeah. You look at me. I'm the meathead. I'm the idiot. I don't know how to play poker. And then I get on the table and I fucking do circles around you. You get, you're all in and I'm like, cool. And they're like, you're good. I'm like, I don't know yet. I have King High. And they're like, oh shit, you're still good. Wait, you're, you're friends with him, Mike? Yeah. Detali, no, you're, you're friends with him? And he no, bet against who, you? I, I know who he, No, I'm not friends with Chad. Okay. We know each other. Okay. Um, but um, I, I remember he came over arrogant to me a little bit. I wanted to slap him up. But <laughs> that was as far as it went. But I don't hate the guy. I got nothing against him. But the funny thing about Kate, and again, I'm not here to put Kate down because I know Kate has a lot of uh, personal struggles. And, you know, I wish her the best. No, I, I, I truly mean that. I have nothing. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I met her through Chad um, in Washington like two years ago. And to me, I, I came She was super nice. Right. And then somebody I didn't know nothing. I never followed her or nothing. Somebody's like, uh, yeah, Mike, you should talk with her. She's a Trump supporter. And I'm like, really? You're a Trump supporter. <laughs> Somebody right? set you up good. Somebody <laughs> set me up really good, right? That's and great. then she didn't really say anything, but she was really nice. And they're like, no, she's joking. The reason why Dentali and her hate each other is over Trump. And I was like, oh, but she was really polite and really nice to me. Um, and so, uh, and then that, I was nice to her and then I met her for Chad. And then I heard what, you know, Chad said he didn't he hasn't answered so I'm not gonna call him unless he answers but um listen I think on on phone calls from now on we should at, get questions and then say we'll answer them on air and then we'll 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 each three of us answering them on air because this way we don't all get talk caught between each other does that sound okay yeah. that sounds better right yeah okay yeah you hear that computer computer did you hear us can it's we, been working get- fine it's been working fine. All right. Tim whatever. Riley on the phone. I heard he's been training. Who's Tim Riley? Tim Riley is um, some kid from Boston who kind of like stepped to me on Twitter. He was feeling his oats and challenged me to fight. To a fight? Boxing. Yeah. And what happened? I don't know. I was kind of scared at first. I didn't think I could <laughs> hold my own with him. And then, <laughs> and then like um, when I you know, realized he was serious. I wanted to punch a hole through his chest, but I, oh, listen, I don't, let's let, let's stop. Guy. Come on. Let, 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 skinny, let's change the subject. Let's ways, let's. Yeah. I'm going to go to you, Matt. Should we try to and, call uh, Kate? Too toxic or is that Mike? mean? <laughs> what what computer? What Should did you we just try to call us? Kate? Or is that mean? No, no, no we're not don't calling. Call Kate. Her. Don't bother her. Yeah, that's no, but it's call funny her. because Dentali cannot do a podcast or a show or YouTube or anything without somebody asking about him in the Kate Hall match. Because that's like his claim to fame. I know it's pretty funny. So <laughs> my claim let, to fame. Let's let's get off. Cor- let's get off Corona. Listen, guys. Let's get off let's Corona. Get off let's get off and, po- Kate. A- and Kate. Kate and Corona. Kate, Corona, and politics for a minute, and let's talk about. I'm going to ask you, Matt. Uh, the state of poker after this is over. Will the World Series go on this week, this year, and be scheduled late, or will it be canceled? My opinion is it will re- be rescheduled for approximately the middle of August, maybe September. What's your thoughts? So question, I, like to, I like to put myself in the, in the spot of the person like running it. If somebody asks me this question. Oh, wait, we got another call. Hold on. Okay. We got another call. Let's answer. Matt, shut the fuck up. We got another call. My bad. <laughs> up to the mouthpiece. This is Mike, Matt, and Mike. What's going on? Oh, hey, Mikey. What's up? Who's this? Uh, 
this is a little bit cheeky, but it's Billy from Berlin again. Hey, oh, Billy, how's it going? Oh, my God, Billy. It's been a long time. Oh, my God. We man. missed you. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I had, I felt like, uh, you know, I, I missed my opportunity. I want to talk more about James Woods. Okay. Uh, I will uh, like, definitely answer that question about James. Uh, uh, James is a very, very caring person. He cares about everybody. He cares about the world. When the when the fires happened uh, in L.A., he was tweeting, and he probably – I can't even imagine how many lives he saved, how many animals he saved by, by getting numbers out to people. With that said, he's extre- a big, ex- huge Trump supporter, and he's a conservative, very, and his views, and he tells people the way he feels. And a lot of people don't like him yeah. for that, but – but you know what? I don't dislike anybody over their politics. I don't care what you think about Paul. I will love you the same as long as you're a good person. And James is a good person. Totally agree, Mike. Politics well, yeah, doesn't I mean, affect you know, the way I, 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 I wouldn't really uh, be upset uh, whether he's a, a Republican or a Democrat. But right. uh, what I would say is that uh, I really enjoyed his, his phone and his mouthpiece. You know, and I, I, this is what I'd like to talk about. Uh, yeah. No, it was great Miami, having him on. Miami John, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the phone call with Miami John. Uh, what, what, what was uh, so fascinating was how he, 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 he came fit in the, in the mix game or in a dealer's choice game or something like this, um, which takes a lot of skill, right? I mean, I, I, you know, you think he's a celebrity and, uh, you know, maybe he's just uh, uh, playing uh, No Limit Hold'em, but uh, to hear that he... Uh, Crashes in a, in a dealer's trust game is, is pretty interesting. What do you think? Yeah, well, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is like me and, me and James are really close friends. You know, I probably talk to him, oh, uh, I would say at least twice a month. And um, he, um, uh, we used to always, when James was at our table, we all used to lick our lips because he was not very yeah, good. Right, yeah. And, and uh, hearing that Miami John's been teaching him is really good. You know, I, I've told him many times I would sit down and teach him, you know, because I know because people like to win, you know, I don't care who you are, how much money you got. Nobody wants mm. to be considered the fish. And this is like, I, I'll compare that to Rene Adjali when uh, he used to play in Bobby's room all the time. And he was uh, uh, Celine Dion's husband uh, before um, he passed away. And uh, he hated being, he hated the fact that anybody would consider him a fish and he wanted to, you know, he worked so hard on becoming, and by, by, by the time he died, I mean, he was a pretty darn good poker player. He was not a, a spot anymore. So, um, you know, a lot of people, no matter how much money you got, they, they pride themselves. They want to get better. And, uh, and that's the same with James. Yeah, that's pretty cool to hear. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't know who's the best celebrity poker player. That does, that, who would you say that is? Uh, oh, oh, the, Rene Angeli, who passed away about uh, five, six years ago. He was, uh, or maybe even longer. No, now. he was. He was okay. still Celine Dion's husband. Maybe seven years ago, he passed away. He was really sick. Um, he's the one that basically discovered Celine Dion, and uh, and he, she was like eighteen when they got married, and he was like, like fifty or something like that. So, uh, oh wow, okay, yeah, wow, yeah. Was, okay. So yeah. it was a very unique situation, and they had a they had a child together and everything. So. Anyways, anyway, I appreciate the call. I appreciate the call, and uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening, buddy. All right, later. So, uh, all right, so back to you. The question you were asking me about the World Series. Okay, back to what I was asking you. World Series. So, So what's your opinion on this? So, if you know, when answering a question like this, I like to put myself in the position of the first person in charge or the person that's, uh, you know, making decisions and say, what would I do in this situation? So it pretty much looks like 90, 95% that world series is not going to happen like normal in June. And no, it's a hundred percent. There will okay. not be a fuck of June. Okay. First will not be the start of world series. Close to a hundred percent. So what I, what I would do if I was them is I I'd plan a series, maybe uh 30 to 60% as long, like, like uh, maybe like a little less than half. So instead of six or seven weeks, it'd be like three or four weeks long. Yeah. Uh, plan it for the end of August, beginning of September of that time period. When kids go back, it. when kids when kids get back to school, you mean? Basically, that you don't really have a choice, but that's like the closest time you can to to the summer. Um, not announce it, but I would plan it, but not announce it because what, you don't want to announce it and then have to change it again or cancel it again. You don't know what they just don't know what's going on. But if you if you plan it out, 
you know, get the space available, get the people, at least, at least we have that backdrop. So as soon as things open up, maybe in six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is, that you can just drop that out and, you know, have a, a mech and say, come, guys, come here. It's a condensed world series, but we're going to have it. We're going to have a main event. Well, uh, the reason why, people. Uh, before I switch over to Mike on his um, thoughts on this, I, the reason why I don't believe you need to lower the amount is the reason why they run it in the summer. It's the deadest time of year in, in Las Vegas. Okay. And they do it. And the reason why Johnny Chan quit playing at the world series is because they changed it to the summer because he, the summer is when he wants to spend time with his kids. Okay. And it's worth no, a lot I didn't of say lower the amount of the buying. That's no, you said lower, lower the amount of, 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 events. Of, of events. Okay. More people will come when it's not the summer than when it is the summer. Okay. People will want to stay with their kids. The reason why he don't play Mikey, is more people are Mikey, not coming Mikey, this year. Mikey. Mikey. There's gonna, there's not, not I'm not saying not this year. this year during the summer, That's but I'm, I'm saying we're, we're talking I'm about saying, this year. I'm saying if Listen. you schedule it August, September, uh, even October, November, and keep it a full schedule, more people will show up at that time than will that, Michael, that, that normally do. Mikey, if it's, if, if, if everything's you clear. You think they're gonna fucking move it up during August? Are you insane? The main objective they do the World Series is when most people can make it out, and most people can make it out. But that's where summer. you're wrong. That's what I'm trying to show you. That's not. They do it that time to fucking to boost up their numbers because it's the slowest time of the year in the. Mike, in Las what Vegas. I'm saying, Mike, what I'm saying is this: every year it's the same time. No, it wasn't. People, it used to always be in April, the first week of April. I liked it better. April, I liked it better. To April, April, May. Yeah. Uh, no, it used no, to be April and May, and they moved it to better to so people will will, yeah, yeah, will no, raise no, up their point. numbers during the slowest time of year. Okay, Correct. that's the but only reason not, why they moved it. I, I'm not. Time. I'm not disagreeing. Okay. I'm not disagreeing. Uh, disagreeing with you there. What I'm saying is, the last couple of years, it's been these months, which has worked out the best for them to move it up during. But it, that's School that's season. out the door now, uh, Dentali. That's that doesn't but even what exist. I, what, but I'm going to tell you why. Okay. We're in March now, right? Mm -hmm. We have April and May, correct? Mm -hmm. April and May is going to be a very big difference in where we're at today. It won't be. We want. We're not. Hey, so? Dentali, are you saying that you think the World Series is going to be ske as scheduled? Okay, you get um, you, you get a hundred to one me, from me. I'm, you get a hundred to one from me. Let, let, okay. Let me make my point. Go ahead. I think they're going to get it off very close to where they usually get it off. You're fucking Maybe. dude. What are you smoking? What kind of drugs are you on? Dude, here, here, here's my drug fucking case. Are you, did you steal them out of my drug Den, case? Dentali, I don't agree with, I don't agree with you, but you've got to take a hundred to one. Fuck. I'll listen, take a hundred to one if you don't. Okay. All right, listen, can I finish my thought? <laughs> I think they're going to get it off exactly maybe about two weeks to where they were originally getting it off. Okay. Maybe a two-week difference. Uh, well, what kind of odds do you lay me that they don't get it off within I, I, I two lay, weeks I of the you start? fucking zero odds. You want to bet? What kind of odds do I have to lay you that it doesn't go off within two weeks? Of, of, you, of... All right. You don't think it's going to be two weeks, correct? No. What odds do you want to give me? I will give you 20 to when, 1. Wait, it's wait, not within two wait, weeks. When does it start? May 31st? I'll give you 20 to 1. It does May not start 20th, within, I by, think. by June 15th. So he's giving you to June 15th. Let's, I give you to June 15th. He's giving you almost three 20 weeks. to one. Like, almost three right. weeks. You're only giving me no, two you, weeks. I'm giving right. him 16 week days. That's two. No, I think it's May 28th or something. Right, so you're giving him like 18 weeks. or 19 days. Give me three weeks. I'll take you 20 to one. How much you want to bet? A thousand to your 20,000? Three take weeks. Okay. Three weeks. You're saying the middle of June. I'll take yours, glance, and half of America. The reason why, <laughs> listen to this. Okay. They're saying. Okay, I'm just going by. Okay, I don't so give a just fuck listen to me, you fucking New Yorker. <laughs> listen to me. Okay, this is what the NBA has said. At the earliest, games could start would be the second week of June with no fans. Okay, do you understand that? That means that there's zero chance of a poker. Okay, you got to bet. You got it with. Okay, by June 15th, <laughs> 20 to one. WSO 20 to one, you get. Vultures. They are vultures. They're like the fucking liberals. They don't care who dies. They don't care who dies. That's what I'm basing But this is this. But this is different. about their fans. The I actually think it's a fair bet. So I think twenty to one is the right price. So I think you guys are. June fifteenth. You got a. You got a. You got a. You know what? I don't have three weeks. Three weeks because June fifteenth. That was a bet. You're no, no. I said June fifteenth. Did I not, Matt? Listen, Michael, we didn't take the bet yet. It's okay. All right, okay, we got, we, all right. You guys what are still negotiating. Have, it's all right. You have, yeah. you have the employee event 
that happens when that's the first event. I don't know. So, I don't, I don't even, I don't even, I'm not like everyone else. I never even look at the schedule until they say the world series starts in two days. All right, technically, then I look at the I want, schedule. I, want I think it's the 28th of June. I want three weeks into June. I'll bet a thousand against your 20. So the 28th, 2, so that's uh, May 31st. So that's three days of May. And so then, uh, 18, you're saying June 18th will be the start. Uh, I'm saying the 21st, June 21st is my bet. 21st. That's almost yeah. four weeks, Michael. That's three weeks. I'll Let me explain. That, I'm but... going to explain to you why it cannot happen at that right. time. What, that, what, what is the, the pool tournament right that happens Mike, every year right is already Mike, what's scheduled. The right now? What's All right, the guys, now? the uh, first event is May 27th, Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Three, three weeks, weeks from that 27th. day. Three weeks from that day is the, is the 18th. Uh, I'm right, sorry. 18th. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. May 27th. 31 uh, days in May, right? No, 30. The 30th. The 30th. 30 in May. Never mind. Wednesday. No, it's 31 because I'm April 30th. 17th. Yeah. June 17th is three weeks. Yeah. 17. All right, Mikey. June 17th, 20 to 1. I'll bet you 1,000 to your 20. Um, June 17th. Uh, I'll bet you. I don't have 20,000 to lose. So you got 500 to 10,000. How's that? You got it. But okay. And just so we clarify, guys, online events don't count. It has to be like a. Real exactly. event. If they switch the, somewhere, yeah. somewhere if they live. change the entire World Series to an online event, which wouldn't shock me, uh, it has to be a live event by June seventh. No, I, I, I agree. It has to be live. It has to All be right. live. Okay, there, bet. Matt, you want any of this action? What's that? You want no, any of this? I think. It, mm, I, if I was to take a side, I would take. I would take Mavs side. If I was to take a side. All right. So you want to bet? I'll bet you five hundred. Ten to one. Ten to one. Ten. No, you got twenty to one. You did 20 to one with him. Hey, I'll take 500 um, more, 10 to one. No, 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 no. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, uh, we're, we're shrinking the bet. Same thing, 20 to one, but 500. What's that? Same bet. Same Five bet, 500, 20 to one, but we're only doing 500. I'll bet you 500. That's all we're doing is 500. Up. That's what he's doing with you. Right. That's same thing as mine. Same bet. But same bet. I, I think the price is fair. I don't like you decide that much. I think you guys made a good bet. The thing is, is if they, I like either side, I would take that side. Unless sure. they're able to push the pool tournament back, then I think Mike has a chance. But because of the fact that the pool tournament is there every year on July 25th, okay, I cannot see them cutting three weeks out of the World Series. And I don't Mike, see people aren't going to gonna travel across the world. Mike, Who's going to travel on a plane? Bit, Mikey, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. I'm here in New York City, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I went out today. It's like fucking nothing happened. There's still people <laughs> roaming around. Still I don't know. Every open. fucking thing I see of New York City, there wasn't one Give person in Times Square. There's not Just one person up. anywhere. Times Square is dead. Stores are closed. People being out, cars on the road, it's like nothing happened. Right. So the point I'm making from here till now, if things get better, you have no shot. But think, listen, how are things going to get better when fucking Cuomo's got the whole, the whole state in lockdown and everybody's outside? You know, it, that's that a, they're not going to listen. That's going to be a mandatory quarantine. You mark that down or I else agree, it's going to be a disaster in New York. I knew things New York would be hit the hardest because there's 8 million people in a, in a city half the size of Las Vegas. I mean, think about that. I mean, everybody's right on top of each other. Plus everything, all the P, all the international flights that come in from overseas, of course New York's going to hit the hardest. All right, all right Tentale, I'll, I'll pay you even money if there's not an event by July 15th. Uh, July 15th? I'll make that bet, money? too. I'll make that bet for a little so bit There's more. not one event by uh, July 15th. Uh, there's no incentive for that. Get the fuck out of here, Joe. Even money? Uh, give me odds, and I'll take that bet. I'll mean? give you two to one. There won't be a fucking event by July 15th. I'll That's take five to one. No, I just offered the World total. Series is usually over by July something eleventh right. or something like that. You guys just said August September fucking two minutes ago. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. I'm not giving you five to one on an extra so month. Give I gave you twenty to one on a month earlier. Why the fuck would I give you five to one a month later? Five to one, I'll take the bet. Nah, best I'll give you is two. I would take your side of five to one too. I would take you aside if I had the one too. And they'd have to cancel the pool tournament and move it way back to move people up. But the whole thing is, is, is they're going to have, they're not, the world series isn't going to lower amount of events. They're all about grab every fucking quarter. No, this they, year they might have to, it depends on space and, and employees and, you know, they're, they're negotiating space. Right. Cause they're, okay. Right. They use, okay. 
before you were around, it, Matt, yeah, before you were around, they used to have the World Series of Poker, and then in May, in April, May, and Matt, then they used Matt's to have they used the to have the dinosaur. Hall of Fame tournament, okay, which was November, December area. I believe they're going to move the fucking World Series to that. All right, My, that, uh, Mikey, you believe they're going to have 100 percent of the events? I believe they're going to have like 50 percent. I'll make you a bet that in this calendar year until December 31st, they have less 80 percent or less of the events played. Yeah, no, I normal agree schedule. With that. I don't. I agree with Matt. 80 percent. You're definitely going to have the events. Trim. You said 50 uh, percent. Right. Take, you said 100. That's okay, what I'm saying. I'll, I'll take. Bet. I'll take under. I'll take over 70 percent of what's being scheduled when they decide to start the tournament. That's a good bet. Over 70 is a good bet. All right, I'll t- I'll take under 75 percent that of the events <laughs> normally played that they put by the end by December 31st. Dude, you're fucking negotiating for five percent. <laughs> I got you. Got to you. Got to dime with me. I take over seventy okay. percent. Okay, so just so we're clear, they have all the normally scheduled events. They have of to what schedule now? Or over, no, right? 70, 70, 71. We said no. I said seventy. You went to seventy-five. I said, and what are you, you trying said to fuck No, I said no. I'll go with dime and over seventy. All right, so we have to go in the middle. Seventy-two and a half percent. Seventy-two per, seventy-two percent to tie. Seventy-three. I win. Let's get Chris Limo. All right, seventy-two percent a tie. That's fine. Okay, seventy-two percent a tie. By the end of the, by, you have to the December thirty-first. Correct. If if right. if it goes off. No, okay. no, 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 no. If it doesn't go off, I I win. No, no, no. That you I, you oh. said they're going to lower the schedule. I say right. they're going to have it rescheduled where there will okay, be so more than no, seventy. We have no bet. That, we have no bet. That. Right. No, because I think there's a chance <laughs> that it won't go off. Yeah. I don't believe that it will. I do believe they're too greedy for it not to go off. You know. So. Uh, if you if you, you stipulate that if the world's if you stipulate no, if the I, World Series goes, no, I'm not I say that. okay. If it goes, there will be more than seventy two percent. I'll take your side. Okay. Listen, okay, if I you guys watch the news and then actually go out to the streets, you're gonna have two different views. I'm going out. I watch the news. The world's gonna end tomorrow. I go outside. Looks like everything's fine. <laughs> well, exactly. right, let's, so, cut, <laughs> let's cut the bullshit. All right, and Tali, who are the three poker players that you hate the most? Yeah, let's, let's just get right it. to um, it. That's what everyone strong, wants to hear. Yeah, that's what we want to hear. Word. Hate yeah, but you, yeah, you, hate, you hate at least I, twenty. So I don't hate anybody. How, what are your top three that you dislike the most? Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh God, I don't know. I can't think of anybody. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't hate. I mean, I get angered when people talk shit, but like I forget about it. And then well, like, here's a better I, question. Who do you just like the most in the three you dislike the most in a game? Because there's a lot of people. He doesn't like Jared Hamby. You don't like Jared Hamby? (laughs) That's another thing. Like, you know what it is? People like Jared Hamby. Like he fucking tilted me for that. Isn't that the one that, that, that's the one that went out with Lizzie. Oh, she hates him too. Okay. (laughs) Like I wanted, I wanted to snap his neck like that second, but I don't think he's a bad person. No, he's not. It's just, He's just, it's just people feel a certain way and they have no clue about other people. So I think they talk a lot of times without knowing what they're saying. And well, uh, you know, I don't want to like, this is what, we got another call. Hang on, you guys. Hi, Jared. Welcome, welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike, I'd like to touch on just a little thing with you real quick. Um, I play only limit. <laughs> And I've been a winning player ever since I ever started, probably 30 Must years ago. Must be fucking nice. I All want right. to ask you I if you think limit will ever come back. Well, we I don't know. I me mean, and I, Matt Glantz play the highest limit games there is every World Series and whenever we're out playing poker. So um, I think okay. actually more people are, are are changing over to mixed games and limit than they ever have. So I, Mikey, think, I, I think he's talking about limit hold'em. Are you talking about I limit think. hold'em? Yes. Limit hold'em. Well, I mostly play. I history. mostly play. Uh, I play a four eight with a half kill, so it ends up being six twelve quite often. I know that's not a very big game. No, that's fine. But this it's, this game has swings of three or four five. You know, guys will lose a thousand dollars in three hours in this game. And what is that? Omaha you know what I mean? with a half with a kill. Is that Omaha eight with, with a half kill, oh, okay, four eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they still play. I mean there's there's Omaha with a kill going on 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 multiple. Uh, poker sites right now i mean i know many of sites that have small games like that where you could play omaha eight with a kill um i i don't see limit the only thing i believe that's in the dustbin of history is limit hold'em and stud the rest are just i think limits uh, is just growing and growing and growing 
And, uh, okay. you know, no limit hold them will be around, but, but I believe that so many of these top poker players that, that, you know, I don't call, I don't call anybody a top poker player unless you can play more than one game. I don't call you know, if you can't play more than one game, you're not a fucking top poker player to me. So, uh, and, and they all want to get better at other games. So I see limit, uh, going to thrive in the future. That's what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Mikey limit mixed games are thriving. Okay. Growing. Uh, but limit. All right. Well, the reason, specifically, the, the reason I ask is I know that you was an excellent no limit player back in the day, you know, playing 20, 40, 40, 80, as high as you could go and mm-hmm. beating the game, you know, and I've done the same thing my whole, ever since I started. Right. You know, seventy percent easily winner, right? Because I had to, you know. Right. That's well, you, the way I, mean, I make it still my money, should be. So. It still should be just. As I easy just always you. wanted your comment on that because I just I'll look over at a little one three game or a you know small game and I'm like, what are these guys doing, man? Like, get over here in this game, win five or six hundred in a couple hours. Well, believe it or not, in a one three no limit, you can win five or six hundred in like one hand. You know, it's a it's no, not a I small game. That, Everybody that's thinks what it's I'm so asking. Small. Am I just a dinosaur sticking with the limit, or should I just move, start easing into the no limit? I mean, it depends what your bankroll is. I mean, if you're willing to yeah. to, to to if you don't mind losing a thousand a day or winning a thousand, you know, it just depends what your what pain threshold is. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. You know, uh, right. uh you know, one th- one three no limit. Okay, you will win or lose a thousand bucks a day. You can mark that down. Okay. The six okay. twelve limits with a half kill or whatever you're talking about, you're going to lose like three, 400 bucks or win three, 400, you know? So, you know, it's just what your pain threshold is basically. Okay. All right. All right well, man. that's why Thanks I called. I appreciate your comment on it. You got it. Man. Luck, Take Thank care. you very Good much. Day. And I really love, I love your podcast, bud. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thanks a lot. Bye. So, Mikey, uh, this is my second time on the, on the podcast. I think I was on, like, your second or third show ever. Yeah. Has anybody else been on twice? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Helmut's been on. Well, we get him. I, I have to have Helmut fun a lot because he's so funny. I yeah, mean, he's just, great. You know, he's well, just so my favorite. And, and, and uh, we do, we've, been, we've become really close as friends. So he, he's been on about five times. Um, uh, other than that, no, you're, the, you're, you're the, only the second person to be oh, on for the second I'm honored. Time. Uh, it should be, man. Hey, we got another call. Hang on, guys. Fuck. Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's Hi, Mike. Jared. Uh, Mike. Who's this? What's up, Mike? It's who's... Chris Limo. Yeah, who's this, man? Chris Limo. What's up, bro? What's up, buddy? Oh, what's up, Chris Matt? Limo. How are you? Good. How you doing, bud? I'm fucking bored, bro. Nothing's going to do in New York City. Lockdown. No shit. Well, yeah. well, Mike, Mike Dentali, he says that everybody's out on the streets celebrating like it's fucking nothing's changed. I don't know. What is <laughs> what it? Is it everybody's what? on the streets or nobody's out? Who's telling the truth? Chris, there? You live in Queens, right? Yes, sir. How, how is it in Queens? It's like when you go outside, is it the zombie apocalypse or is it like nothing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's not one fucking person out. I'm in the middle of the street walking up and down the streets. I have nothing to do. There's not one person out. Yeah, not one yeah, person out. Now. Did you hear that? It's dark. What about in the oh, Yeah, it is dark. There's <laughs> nothing but, going on. Listen, I hear doing, the man? criminals are scared to go outside because of the virus. But see, that's only going to last two weeks. After that, they're going to be like, fuck this shit, you know? Chris, Chris Limo, what do you I think, think about uh, AOC, your representative over there, try, uh, letting out the people? Send the people out of jail because of the virus. Oh yeah, they're he, she's crazy. <laughs> Fucking sick. <laughs> what do you think about that, Chris? <laughs> uh, I didn't hear Can't you ask Chris, one more time, he, but... He's biased. He's a fucking criminal. <laughs> he's a criminal. He's biased. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Hear, I didn't hear the question. That's not true. Chris is a family man. No, he says, "What do you think of your representative, uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, letting criminals out of jail?" Because of the virus. He's a fucking moron, but I love the guy. Fuck it. Let him on. Oh, he's 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 not a fucking guy. It's it's a a fucking AOC. Check. AOC. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. He might not She's a twenty nine year old that him, that used to be a bartender that she's 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 um she's lecturing the whole entire United States on economics. Oh my god. She doesn't she's even know what economics are. She's the most tilting person in politics. Yeah, but I like her for everybody it's hard to hate her. She is tilting. I fucking hate she's, her. She is she is hard. Yeah, it's, hard. Stand no, it's not hard to hate her, but she is tilting. You know what? P- Pansica told me the funniest she's thing. She's never no, seen no, no, a garbage AOC. disposal. What do you say, computer? She's never seen a garbage disposal. 
<laughs> she's never seen it. It's true. She hasn't. Have you heard that? She's never seen a garbage disposal. That's a true story. Panziger told me the funniest thing about ASA. It's probably true. He said if she wasn't hot, no one would know her name. No one would recognize her. She wouldn't be a success. If she was fat and ugly, whatever, she would have never been where she is. And she's all about that stuff. Did you hear so about the conspiracy theory? Did you hear about the conspiracy theory about her? I'd hit that it. She was, she was. Oh, uh, computer said he hit it. Like say that? Say. Don't tell me. Talk. I'm gonna tell your wife that computer. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what are you doing? Yo, Chris. Right now, Chris, what are you, Chris, wait, what are you, what are you, shut the fuck up, then, t- then Tolly. What you mostly say, Chris? just to shut her up. Oh, you hit it just to shut her up, computer? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I, my, I like what that. You, I like that. Computer's got jokes. Wait, what are you Chris has, a, Chris has a question you. for me. What did you say, Chris? I didn't hear them tell you. What is he talking about? What nonsense is he saying now? Nothing. What, what did you say? You had something you wanted to ask me. Oh, no, I was talking to them tell you. He, he said something. Oh, about him. I could only hear you. Chris, clearly, what, what, Chris, what's your opinion on poker players? Majority are poker dicks. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just can't stand majority of them. Why? Why? They take the game to a whole different level, man. They they kill the fun out of the game. That's all they yeah. do. They they fuck up for, they ruin it for the the everyday people that want to come out and enjoy and have fun. Well, that's that's, that's why all, that's all they do. That's why here on the mouthpiece we stage war against all the fucking uh, robots and all the solvers <laughs> and all those people. We we stage war. What's funny is they all play poker every day. And then they tell you how great they are. I play a no limit tournament twice a year and I'm down to the last two tables of every one. And, uh, but they play like 150 of them a, a week. Shouldn't they uh, be this that much better than me? I don't know. I play it. Mike, I, I, it's I, it's I think simple math, Mike. If you play fucking every week, every tournament for an entire year, and if you don't fucking win one, then you're horrible. No, uh, I listen, agree. I'm not, I'm, I'm an average poker player. I'm not great. I'm not good. I'm decent, right? Yeah, I don't play I don't every know. event. I just started playing in 2015, really. And listen, I'm not bragging, but I, I, my results are pretty decent. You know, I have, what, six, seven final tables, uh, WPT final table. I won an almighty event. And I play probably three Borgata events in a year. I go to Vegas for the World Series. I go to Bellagio for the 10K. That's, that, that's all I play. Mm-hmm. And for the amount of tournaments I play, my cash is, my results are pretty good. But I don't sit there and brag I'm one of the best in the world. But these poker dicks, they fucking, they have a million in buy-ins and they have 800000 in cash. And they're being staked by, 90% of these players are being staked. I want no to see shit. these guys put I up tell their people own that all the time. And play, and I want them to put up their own money the way I've been doing and play the way I play. I want them so to limo, play hole in Chris, with, Chris, a, with second pairs. Who's, the, who's their, the three poker players you dislike the most? Listen, oh, for some reason, I can't stand that Doug Polk. I just, I just can't stand him. I don't know why. Hey, Doug Polk. welcome Doug to the mouthpiece. Oh, wow. Doug Polk is not there liked by go. many here on the mouthpiece. He's what? And, 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 like and, I, I, and a lot of people uh, don't like Doug. I, you know, I'm close with Doug. I like Doug a lot. I and, used uh, to like Doug. Mike, too. I don't. Mike, if you see my Twitter, <laughs> I just go on Twitter just to follow Mike and Tully. But every time this guy Doug <laughs> posts something, it just bothers me. So recently, I just told him to shut the fuck up, and he never responded back. And then I think yesterday I was bored. I was like, yo, Doug, let me take you out of retirement. I'll play a little heads up. I didn't hear nothing from him. Well, we have a, we have a caller. We have a caller. If you, got, you guys aren't aware of this, but we have a caller that calls in every show, and there's a good chance he'll probably call into this show, that, that as soon as he answers, it's like, fuck Doug Polk, and Doug Polk's a bitch. Oh, wow. and, uh, it's so funny. It. The thing, listen, the me fun. and Doug, I was actually good. For, I was friends with Doug. We got along fine. And I was actually asking him advice, like, you know, how to start a podcast, how to, you know, and, and then he didn't, he, he wasn't returning any of my texts. And then the next thing you know, I started this and then he was just saying shit about the one, the postal interview or whatever, which he knew nothing about. And, um, and the thing is I, I learned the most about Doug and, um, is he'll do what he does is he wants to increase his level of fame by degrading people who have a, a higher level of fame in the poker world and he'll do anything for clicks and say anything about those that person to, to do that and i have no respect for people like that he did that that's to Daniel. I, don't, I don't know the guy from a hole in the wall and that's why i don't like him i just yeah. don't like him i just know he's your did camera it to, mikey I, match with this guy? I just know he did it to daniel and then he started doing it to me 
when I when I started showing back up in the poker world recently and, and playing a lot on streams. So uh, when I saw him do it to me, that's when I realized that what you know what he was doing. And uh, and I and then Daniel and me, we were talking about it. You know that we're, we're friends again and everything. And um, and he said that, that that he did it for to him for a year and a half. You know he'll do, listen when you when you're trying to increase clicks and, and and people to your site, you you say outlandish things to get clicks. I mean, you, I, I can name so many political people who do that. I know so oh. many, I just can't stand people who do that. The reason why I have such a good following with the mouthpiece is because people know I don't do shit for clicks. I tell people how I feel. I, I tell people from my heart. And if you don't like it, then stop listening to me. That's all. Mikey, I that's, what I love about you, all, Mike. that's what I love about you. Mikey, you are what you see is what you get. And we yeah. do love you for that. But to take Polk's back, I know him personally, as Matt Glantz does. I really think he's a good kid. and I always got along with him you. fine. Until I got nothing he... against him. Well, here's where, where, here's where things went south for me. Okay, we always got along fine. We texted with each other. I, I consider him an acquaintance, a, a pretty, you know, not a friend, but acquaintance, you know, somebody that I respected or whatever. Uh, when we played at the World Series a couple of months, we got along fine. We played all day together. But then uh, when uh, we, me and Phil played on the uh, Live at the Bike show, right? And like uh, Phil had his hand halfway in the muck and I thought he had already folded. And I'm just like, I'm like, uh, uh, said something like, oh, I threw two spades away or something. Right. And then he started putting out, he put out, he was putting out videos that I was cheating with Phil Helmuth to try and, and, and tell Phil that I threw two spades away. So he would call. I'm like, just, just like crazy shit, which everybody in poker knows. I I would agree with you on that. A lot of us do that fucking around. And if he did that, that's but he did that cool. seriously because- and put out a whole video and people were sitting there saying, Oh, you were, you were cheating with Phil. And like, even Daniel's like, like everybody knows you, Mike, that you'd fucking, you got a in better his, chance of killing, of killing a fucking ant walking by. Than in, his, cheating in, his, anybody. in his, in his defense, if that's the truth, oh. I think Doug Polk maybe looked at it as a different point of view. I understand your point of view. No, he called me and Phil cheaters in the video. I mean, literally, I, I then I would have to take your back. Yeah. I, go I look it up. Just go look up. Having... Go look up back. Mike, Where... Doug Puke Polk accuses Mike Madison and Phil Helmuth of cheating. Doug Puke, that that's true? a good Is fucking... That <laughs> yeah. Go, go look you up know, the video. Now, what, what Mike, about, what, that's when I stopped about, liking him. What about when Glance folded that hand on Polka Night and someone else picked it up and played it? What was that? A, was no, that a... Frank Casella folded the hand and I picked it up and played it against Doug and beat him for like, I don't know, like 30,000, 40,000. That was amazing. <laughs> Imagine that. See, so you know what I'm saying? And I know, and I know Doug, I know Matt would never do that intentionally, and there was no cheating involved. But imagine how the spin on that one. Come on. So I get what you're saying, Matt of South. And And then and and then after that, after he accused that, then came that postal thing where he went fucking ballistic on me. And then finally, you know, even when Herolibus finally came out and said, you guys should stick up for Mike. He's like, he got him to talk. He's like, he's net was never going to get on a, a podcast if you're going to bash him and call him a cheater and all that. So I let him talk, and uh, anybody who listened to understood why I was letting him talk, and and, and that's it. You know, it's not going to come on and say, "Hey, Mike Postle, did you actually cheat? Did you do this? Let's hear about this hand." Uh huh. He's going to hang right up. So this that's just what it is. I bet I want to make a bet that you and Doug will be friendly. Well, I years. hope so. I have nothing against him, but he's okay. got to, you know, I, I don't hold grudges, but when you, uh, you can't be calling me and Phil Helmuth cheaters just to get fucking people to click. And, and I, people were attacking me in my Twitter line that I was cheating with Phil Helmuth. It was just incredible. It was insane. Yeah. Well, there's Mike, there's Matt, trolls out there that are going to fucking jump on. Let's anything. call Doug. Let's call Doug right now. Can we call him? <laughs> Bring uh, him on. You, got, Matt, you can text him. Nah. Doug yeah. Puke Matt, is the Matt clickbait is champion. Listen, you'll enjoy, well, you'll wait enjoy a minute. Hold it. Computer, what did you just say? Doug Puke is the clickbait champion. No one can deny that. That's <laughs> Yo, can, can we say, let me, let me see. We, Matt, Matt, before you do this, can we get Doug out of retirement and have him play Chris Limo head up? I don't know. I'll play no, up, whatever you want. 25K, 50K, wow. whatever you want. I'm calling him up. Doug hasn't played poker in a long time, but I'll uh, take Doug in that one. Doug hates poker now. Yeah, well, it's, let me right. tell you, I hated poker for many years, too, after I quit, and then I was forced into having to play again full-time. Yeah, but Doug's on top of his game, man. He's good-looking. He's got money. He's got a girl. He's I got nothing against Doug. I swear to you. If he would just retract ac- accusing me and Phil of cheating, 
then I would be as friend. I would be as friendly with him as I was before. I guarantee um, you, he'll retract it. I guarantee you. I guarantee. You I won't. can't believe. I can't. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt Osell, I can't believe that really happened. Yeah, I was fucking and that, dude. It was insane. But the whole video he put out was just insane. I mean, I couldn't. When people were saying about it, I, I had to go look up the video. I was just like, "There's so much that gets you know that we let go in a home game or like even in poker night that we mm -hmm. fuck around. We know there's no collusion or cheating. It's just well, like know. you know. But then he did. He does it for clickbait. If he could sit there and put out a video because he has a big following, saying Mike Madison and uh, and Phil Helmuth are caught cheating on a stream. It's going to get fucking clicks. So that Matt, I, what, do, I what, do you, what do you have to say about that, Matt? Hold on, Matt. I'm texting Doug. Oh, Hold Danny on. said a computer says if you get Polk to come on, that would be epic. Yeah, <laughs> that's what computer says. We could even have him join the Zoom. Mike, get get me a heads up match with someone. I'm in the mood for some heads up action. All right, Chris, we'll work on it. Guys. We're Chris, gonna let you off. Up. We're gonna How let much you want to play for Chris because I'm sure Doug will do it. I'll play Chris, him for 25, 50, whatever he wants. What's that? 50K? 25K, 50K, whatever he wants, up to 50K. You're playing, yeah, which, but you'll, put, you'll have to play online because you can't, like, put me in a poker room. But, uh, we have, we're no, we're gonna no, teach no, you. no, 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 live, live. I don't play online. There's no live. poker rooms. You well, how about this? This is what we've been playing. Up. Listen, listen, Chris, Mike, this is how whenever, we've been playing. Whenever the poker opens up, I wire you to 50K. He wires you to 50K. You hold on to the money. I play him anywhere, I, wherever he wants. Would you, if you played on a poker app, but we're, in a Zoom like we are right now, where you could actually see him, would that be considered not live? No, I I, I play live. I don't like online. I don't. I don't play blame apps. you. There's a lot of chip tells, a lot of things that people yeah, put yeah, their yeah. chips in. You yeah. gotta look for. I, I just okay. want to sit there and play them and, and play. I want to view them. That's and play. that's the challenge. That's Chris Limo, Doug Polk, 50k. Live. All right, there you go. We've got a, me and Matt have made a. Uh, I have made a bet with Tentali. Uh, 20 to 1 for 500. He says the World Series goes off by June 17th. Right. Um, and now we have another challenge. Doug Polk has been challenged here on the mouthpiece to play 20. Uh, how much? 50K head up? There up you go. Up to 50K, whatever he wants. By Chris Limo. All right, Chris, we got to let you go. We got. Uh, I appreciate you All calling right. in. Chris. Thanks for calling in on the Chris. mouthpiece. You got it. Peace. Later. Have a good night, gentlemen. Later. All right. All right. So. Mike, you be able to convince Chris Wimodo to learn Omaha Hello and play your heads up for 50K don't, like a month since yeah. he only plays No Limit. <laughs> I, I, you know, who, I don't know who Chris Limo is. He seems to be You would know if you saw him. Good oh, kid. I would. A good guy. Yeah, How yeah, old yeah. is he? He sounds like he's about 40 or something. Yeah. Yeah, younger, about 40. He's, yeah family guy. Yeah, that's what it yep, sounds like. Hit it, yeah. 40. Wow, just a good guess just by the voice. So um, anyway, so uh, where do you – okay, so we talked we, – we got a little bit off subject. We talked about the World Series. Um. Where do you guys think uh, the not just the World Series, but uh, poker in general gets back to normalcy? Would you say next year? Would you say the end of the year? Because uh, uh, we know that if this virus is coming back in October, I mean, even if they have a vaccine, how, there's still going to be a lot of people afraid to, to fly. You know what I'm saying? I think we're out of work for four to six months. I like that. I think that's a fair assessment. So that's yeah. where in March you're talking about uh, August, right? Yeah. August, September. I would say more like September, October. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm September, October. I agree. Mike okay. Tentali doesn't think so. Tentali thinks we'll be back in like a month, two months. He is fucking delusional. He doesn't watch. He doesn't follow it like we do. No, he's listening to Trump. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Well, Trump, I'm telling you right now, Trump is trying Listen, to be, it's real optimist. He's trying to be optimistic. He knows he knows what the real timeline is, but he can't have a full on panic. Can't. He can't have people looting all the stores when he doesn't have the National Guard or the army in the streets. He can't have it. So he's got to like coax people through. OK, so he's getting this money out. And then in like three weeks, they're going to pass another. You can mark it down. You heard it from me. I think I said it earlier. Another two trillion. Well, it won't be that much because because the, 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 they've already been given the money, the airline people. But they're going to another trillion out or whatever it is out to the American public for more for more money to go out why people are locked down i just know that it ha it's inevitable but if he tells everybody six weeks the people are going to just start rioting i just i mean it, it's a tough balance can you imagine wanting to be would you want to be in his shoes right now matt uh, no for sure would you I anybody would, i would never want to be a president it's just like but sounds like a miserable job it is right so wh who would want to be in his shoes right now so but that's why i tell people listen you'll have plenty uh, i know one person hillary clinton yeah. Uh, can you imagine if Hillary Clinton was doing this? <laughs> She's going to be in his shoes right now. 
how fucked would we be if Hillary Clinton was running this right now? <laughs> Ask yourself that question. OK, first of all, she never would have closed. She'd still have fucking flights from China and Europe over coming here. OK, I mean, I can't even imagine. But with that said, you know, if you go down the conspiracy path, which sometimes I like to dwindle down, if this is all a conspiracy and that they unleashed it on purpose, which I don't I'm not convinced of that. But I'm, I, I think about it a lot. I'm not going to lie. OK, then when people say we wouldn't be going through this if Trump wasn't president, I could rightfully say you're right, because if he didn't charge a trade war with China, they wouldn't have hit us back like this if it was done on purpose. So, yeah, you know, there's two ways. Mikey, to look at that. Where, where, where are you going to think we're going to be in a week? I think the next two weeks, they keep saying how bad One it's going to be. OK, Trump says it's going to be very bad the next week. That means it's going to be bad times a thousand because he always <laughs> under under. Right, under let, let me do a little thought experiment with you guys to okay. see to, when they say how bad it's going to be to see how you understand exponential numbers. OK, for both you guys. OK. All right. Mm -hmm. So say say some Chinese family in Wuhan ate, they ate a bat for dinner. And three of them, a, mo a mom, dad, and a kid, they got, they all got the virus. Okay. okay. And that virus had a doubling rate of a hundred percent every day. So tomorrow there'll be six people with the virus and, and that's how expanded every, every day doubled. So three, six, 12, how many days do you think it would take to get to a million, a million people infected? Fuck. It would already be here. It already had over a million. How many days from if they started with three the first day and it doubled each day, only double, not. Probably, well, probably, about, probably about 350 days. 350 days? What do you think, I'll Mike? take way under. What would you take? I'm um, going figure it out real quick. No, no, don't figure it out. Just take a guess. Oh, okay. I'll I would say, answer. I'll tell you uh, to get to a million from one on, let's just say- From three. three. From, from three, three, not from one. And then doubling. Yeah, doubling. Oh, I take it back. I would say uh, three months. Okay, so 90 days. And Mikey says 350 days. Yeah, so I'm gonna right, get the real back. number. What is it? I take it back. Nineteen days. That's what I thought. I knew it was way long. Nineteen I knew I was days. High. That's, that's. I was gonna say a month. I was numbers. gonna. Okay. I was gonna say a month. I but knew think it was about low. that. Three people doubled, and this one more than doubles okay. every day. We got another okay. call, guys. We got another call. We'll get back to it. Welcome to the mouthpiece. Is Mike? Hi, Doug. Mike, what's going on? <laughs> Who's this, man? My name's Rob. I'm calling from New York. Hey, what's Rob. Up, Rob. A lot, a lot of, of people from New York. That's because they all Dentali fans. Yeah. Hey, Rob. I, what's up, Mike? How bad is it where you live? Huh? He said, "How bad how is it where you live?" Oh, I'm in. I'm upstate Orange County. I think we got like eight or nine hundred cases now, but uh, it's not terrible. Oh, you're near. Uh, you're near. What's his name? Sean Deeb. He lives up in Albany. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You a big Sean Deeb fan? In the room up there. Huh? You a big Sean Deeb fan? Oh, yeah, I like all the assholes. Mikey, Sean, I like them all. <laughs> I told them the first time I played them. And you called the great right show. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, man. No, Listen, I told them one. The first time I played Sean Sean's D, our I asshole. Casino there. He was Listen, Sean's an asshole. To be but, but normal. Huh? Sean's an asshole, but he's fucking like I'll agree with Matt. He's a fucking once in a generation talent. Listen, I'll never, he, I'll always he's, a, back he's a great poker player. and He's a great personality. That's what, you know, I told him we were sitting next to each other. I think the first tournament I played with him and I had this like huge chip stack as we're before the money and he's sitting next to his like, you're the first fucking guy with 500K in this tournament and I'll bet you you won't make the money. I said, well, how much you want to bet? So I'm going to go upstairs to my room and come back and we'll make the money. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we can keep it funny. Somebody doesn't know. That. That's listen, fucking I love, great. I, I said, I love the asshole routine. I said, I'm a professional asshole. I said, it's not going to work with me, but we could be friends, you know, something to that effect. But yeah, I like all yeah. the fucking assholes. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, because um, you know what? Like you guys were talking about before, you know, the, the poker community, the poker world. I'm a part-time player. I play for fun. I play my own money. Play tournaments. I gave up on cash a long time ago. It bores me. But I just come to learn most of these poker players that play regularly are like dicks. I mean, they really are. They, they are, are. What's real and what's not real. Would you say they are, are dicks or not? No, they are dicks. They have no, no clue shit. what like, you, you, you say. Dude, the real poker world, world is the most miserable world. place to be around. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I, like, I play most of my poker with... now in like private games or with friends or You're I don't so even right. I don't even play fucking. In, in, I can't. St I, 
I don't even go to like during the World Series. I, I the only reason why I, I don't even go to the Bellagio and play cash anymore because I think they're just I, they're just miserable people. So I, I play in the ten Ks and all the big. You're so right, Mike. My, you know? I remember my. It's first like a family. Yeah, it's a family. When I first family. started playing poker, I had no idea the pool of players I was running into, and you know you befriend so many people because everybody's tries to be a friend. They're so friendly, and you know I had no idea the just what I was dealing with. You know, I, I, I really thought it was just straight up good guys, business people, but it's the lowest of the low. They're fucking cutthroat fucking scumbags, man. They're all looking at me. Let me tell you something. I want, I want to, I want to say this real quick before uh, my phone dies. It's like on low fucking battery, but uh, like talking about the poker room, like I haven't been inside the cash poker room in a while. I played a tournament, like at the Borgata primarily, and they have a tournament room, you know, the signature room or wherever else. And dude, I walked to the poker room last time, and I swear, a fucking junkyard looks happier. Broken bumpers of cars look happier than these people sitting at the fucking cash games. You what, walk through there. There was a poker room open last night at the Borgata. Like the Borgata still open? To their no. skin. It's terrible. Okay. I, I agree with you, man. I, I think poker has to come, has to evolve back into just having a good time, people enjoying each other's company, trying to make money. Too many cutthroats, too many phonies. Too many left-leaning liberal fucking opinionated idiots think they know everything. Never mind that. No, Dude, they're just miserable. No life. They're, they're broke. They're chasing money. They're, they're like begging to win 80 bucks so they can go home with something to eat later. I mean, it's they're, they're playing, but I don't know why. I, I tell you, I, t- I like to tell people this all the time. You know, people are calling my show and they'll say, you know, about being a professional poker player. And I, every answer is stay in school. Stay in school for all the young kids because because there's only like, one percent that make it in poker you know you'll hear about oh this guy this uh this guy whatever there's one percent of matt glances in the world or me or hell me matt glances just not... so fucking terrible but he's so lucky yeah well yeah <laughs> well, listen, i want you know to get into matt glance for a second hold on i want to i want to i've been trying to convince Uh-oh. matt a little bit for like the last two years all right i want to get matt behind the rifle and a pistol at the range i want him to have some real fun and shoot a gun and stop being so fucking scared of him and realize they're just fun tools. Stop playing video games. That's fake guns. You like it so much. <laughs> Fortnite. I, I hate guns, man. I, I, I do not get like Matt, guns. I know you hate guns, but he, listen, it's nothing. It's a fucking instrument. The Boy Scouts use them. They're nine years old. No, it's not. I don't, I'm not scared of a gun. Whatever I would hold, I just have no interest. This is zero interest. Though. You know that you brought up guns. Me. I put out because you know, with all this going down now, and you have. All the, you know, the whole America is closed. Nobody has jobs. You know, nobody it, it, in a couple of weeks, you know, once they get the checks after that, they want, you know, how long till they don't have money, you know? So gun sales have gone up 10,000%, by the way. And yeah, then the, unpre- the unprepared of, people are running around buying guns. Yeah. And then I, I, literally we had this discussion, me and Alan Keating yesterday, we were, we were, you know, we were playing on a poker game with kind of like in Zoom right here. And he brought out literally 30 different guns. He's like, this one's 6,000. This one's 5,000. He's like showing all these guns, right? He said he just bought a new gun. He was in the, he was in line to uh, at a gun store recently. And he said, he goes, all these, there's a bunch of people that are scared to death that they're wanting to go buy guns. He goes, they don't even know how to fucking use one. One guy asked me, how do you pull the trigger? So with that said, yeah. um, I did put out a poll recently i think it was a week ago how many people were anti-gun like me i i'm a person i was always been scared to own a gun or, or hold one that are now leaning towards getting a gun and 50 percent, there was something like 2700 people in the poll said that they're now open to getting a gun so well, can that, i tell you the truth mike i don't want that i don't want those people getting guns because they have no fucking no, idea what they're doing no that's what Matt, that's what alan keating was saying um, but I'll just give you an idea is, is like the whole entire thing about gun control and all that. When you see an epidemic like this, all, all that, that, that also destroys the left's, uh, gun control, uh, uh, thing that they've been pushing every year. So the, the, the thing is, is I would net told everybody for years, I do not want to ever hold a gun. I cannot have a gun. If I had a gun, I would have killed myself 50 times already, maybe 100. Yeah, maybe I'd leave that. Well, that, too, that makes me. you a responsible sure. non-gun owner. Right. But I'm, so I'm serious, with that said, been, though. I told Matt, I'm even in Pennsylvania because in Pennsylvania, every gun that I own, I'm a retired police. So every gun that I own is legal for him to touch in Pennsylvania. 
But in New York, it would be a felony because we live in a communist state here in New York. Right, and they think right. guns are yeah. taboo and this and that. So it's it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. So I'm That's a very I'm a reasonable, pragmatic guy when it comes to every issue, every public issue, whether it's abortion, whether it's guns, whether it's whatever. Yeah. But I don't want people who don't know the first thing about guns touching a gun myself. I also I don't want That's Nancy true. Pelosi. And that makes sense because I told my me brother. To do with them either. I want you to hear this. So I told my brother who has three guns. I go, Scott, I want a gun. He's like, there's no way I'm giving you a gun. He goes, I go, you don't have to give it to me. Give it to Jerry. I, I, that's my girlfriend, by the way. And I'm like, uh, he's like, no, I'm not giving you a gun. So, but the point I'm trying to make is because of, and, and again, I don't want to stoke fear, but I just, two plus two equals four. When nobody has money and everything's locked down and all these people that work week to week and it becomes fight or flight and they have two kids to feed, where are they going to get the, oh, where, where do they get, you know, so I want to protect myself if they come to a, you know, to a neighborhood, you know, and that's a, why a lot of people are thinking, which is what the, the right has always been saying. Guns are to, for protection, not, you know, not for killing people that they all put, you know, out. But well, well, I'll give you an example just to tell you how, how ridiculous gun control politicians are, that they don't know what they're talking yeah. about. So, for example, recently, well, not recently, but a couple, three years ago, Cuomo, who's the governor here in New York. He said something at a rally or whatever it was he gave. He says, you don't need 10 bullets to kill a deer or some stupid shit. Does he not even know the state regulations limit your rifle from having more than five rounds in your deer hunting anyway? So like he, he he's saying doesn't. stuff these guys don't know what they're talking about. But they just no. spew because it sounds good. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, that so, I know. Listen, I, plan, I've watched enough plan, politics the last three get years. Together. You're going to bring your, you said your kids are teenagers. I'm going to have them shooting also. You're going to shoot. Mike, Mikey D's going to come. We're all going to go out nah. there. Nice so, I'll tell you why I don't like guns, right? And you're From going to get over your fear. I'm going to bring my five foot zero wife who also has a concealed carry permit. So you're not intimidated, man. How's that? I, I appreciate you when I give me any guns, but I'll tell you why. I, it's a short story. When I was uh, 15, I worked at Burger King and I was behind the register and uh, three guys came in late at night, uh, brought it with guns. God, that would make me up. more pro gun. <laughs> okay. Hold, held us up. And I was a 50 year old kid. I, I didn't even think, held a gun to my head, one of them. I didn't think it was real. I thought it was a joke. I don't know why I thought it was a joke. I was 15 and I was just an idiot. And I was just laughing when they put the gun in my head. And the guy, took, he had a sawed off double barrel shotgun and fucking whacked me over the head as hard as he could. He didn't shoot me, whacked me over the head with the gun as hard as possible, knocked me out. And it was like lights out for me and never really wow. touched the gun. So never touched the gun after that. Never wanted to touch it. If that. somebody ever did that to me, I'd probably have like 20 fucking guns in the house. Yeah. I would have a well, different see, effect, Mike, but everybody affects That's where you're wrong. See, what so. Matt just told you, Matt, Matt, if Matt had a gun in his back pocket or on his hip, or he was, even if he was trained, his common sense and training would have told him, give up the money and pray you survive. The guy has the drop on you. He's got the gun to your head already. You don't have yeah. an opportunity at that point to draw and defend yourself. So in that situation, Matt, even if you were armed, your best course of action would have been to just give up the money or do whatever it is you did because you came out of it alive. Yeah, it's you go through your anyway, shit so and, and you're not prepared to, you know, properly get into a safe position to be able to draw your own weapon and shoot, then you don't shoot. Doesn't matter who you are or what yeah. the situation is. But if the guns are the most misconceived machine piece of machinery in the country. In this country, depends on what part of the country you are. In New York area, it's considered taboo. You smell a gun, they go crazy. Other places, you're down in the south in West Virginia or Texas or the middle of the country or Alaska, it's like, like a pack of gum on your dashboard. It's nothing. Nobody thinks two, two, two seconds about it. And the, the arguments for, listen, I'm a retired police officer in New York City. I've had my share of involvements with guns and bullets flying and everything else. And being afraid of guns is an irrational position to have. It's rational to say, I never want to have a gun because I don't trust myself. Just like people say, I don't want to have a car because I don't trust myself to drive. Not because I'm afraid to hit a tree, but because I'm afraid to hit somebody else and kill them. That's rational. But to be, Matt, I'm going to get you off this fear, man. I'm telling you, we're going to go out in Pennsylvania, your home state, when it works at some point in the springtime, while everyone's still hiding out. And we're just going to put some holes through paper. <laughs> you're going to get over your fear and you're going to find out how fun it really is. It's the reason why there's an Olympic sport, you know. It's not all gotcha. about having trying to kill anything. Gotcha. So I well, want you to do it. Just I, don't ever give me one because I, 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 I get suicidal too often. So I'm uh Yeah, I'm, that's uh, great. But you shouldn't be anywhere near a gun or an open window. I mean, that's exactly. Uh, see, I know that. So that's whatever. But no, I respect other people's <laughs> yeah. thought process. But it, but it, it is amazing that so many people that set like a month ago said they would never carry a gun are now flocking to gun stores to buy a gun. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't I, just for the record. I don't like that. 
just so you know. I, I, don't yeah, like I agree. You have to get training. They don't know what they're doing. I don't want them out there. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Makes sense. What you're saying makes sense. Plus, it's, they're empty the shelves. I can't buy more shit because these idiots are out there buying it. So yeah, no shit. I don't like that, that for more than one reason. But, I mean, but how, what, yeah, that's, that's you know what? about abortion. Hold on. See, I only get to do whatever it is on Twitter with Matt and give him my point. See, my position on abortion is this. As a person, I don't like the idea of killing unborn children. As a pragmatic person of what can work as a, as a policy for governance is very simple. If you Heartbeat find a grown person on the floor and you, the first thing you do to see if they're alive is take their pulse. I don't care if you're a doctor, an EMT or a Boy Scout, a nurse, mm-hmm. you're going to take their pulse. Why? A heartbeat. Heartbeat is proof right. of life. I said heartbeat law. That's what I agree. Athens of life. Every, there should be a national standard for political reasons. You should, and for just sanity, you should not be able to have an abortion once there's a heartbeat. Because that is I agree. undoubtedly that's, that's the first six time weeks. That's approximately six weeks. Now, I'm fine with that. When they talk about these, tri- when they talk about my daughter, who's going to be seven years old, she was born at 25 weeks. Okay? Yeah, she was that's... born at 25 weeks. Absolute miracle baby. She's beautiful. Everything is mm-hmm. fine. Knock on wood. Okay. That's six months. Yeah. When people talk about third trimester abortion, unbelievable. And they talk about, the, but here's the thing forget about the unbelievable part, Mike. When they talk about the excuse of, well, if the mother's health is at risk, there is not a fucking medical condition that is remedied by killing an unborn baby at nine months. Not one. You could have an abortion, or you could end the pregnancy, take the child, and the child is completely viable and survivable. But there is no illness a mother can have. You mean, like what, the, you mean what, the like what the guy in Virginia did, Nordstrom? I mean, like that fucking yeah, comment. He, he should be he should be drawn and quartered. That fucking ass. I agree. He should my be point is, I'm, I'm being dead serious. When these politicians say these irrational things, like the mother's health is at risk, there is not one. Con- I challenge any doctor or anybody else to tell me what condition a woman could have in their third trimester of pregnancy that is remedied by killing the baby. There is none. Wow. So it's a bullshit argument. Well, it's even like this. You, we just go back to 2008. OK, that's 12 years ago when Hillary was running uh, against Obama. Right. For president. And she said abortion should be legal, but rare. All of a sudden, the rare part about it went right out the door. That's all. You know, well, like I, I, I said, don't as, as, a, as a person, I don't like the idea of abortion. I think, you know, you shouldn't kill babies. I'm not a religious person. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person of faith, but I'm not religious. I don't follow the direction of any church or any religion, but I believe what I believe. And hey, you know, and I again, respect personally, I'm beliefs. not with it. I'm not with the whole abortion thing. But like I said, as a pragmatist and a society in a country where they want certain things, again, the idea that it's a woman's right to choose is horseshit. There is no such law. There is no such ruling. But the woman can't doesn't have the right to choose to sell a kidney for one hundred thousand dollars. So this idea that they could do what they want with their body is nonsense. The truth is, it's about the right to have an abortion, not about the right to do what you want to do with your body. OK, so if everyone would just talk honest and straight and pragmatic and stop trying to pander to someone's ideology, we can get a the lot problem further. Is that, uh, that'll never happen. Shit, yeah. That's wrong. Problem. Yeah. Well, and it, it's, no one's calling them out. Again, if, I'd love to ask someone who says a woman's right to choose. Say, well, how come they can't choose to sell their kidney? Yeah. No, I mean, the a reason. Point. It's a good point. I mean, the reason I, it's not about the woman's rights. I know Matt gave the example of what he thinks right is versus far right. And, you know, the abortion example he gave, what, you know, pro-abortion means you're far right. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. It, actually, I pretty much am saying that. But the, the right no. to choose is hiding. The, they don't want to say the words right to an abortion. It's not pro-abortion, right to an abortion. I say, yeah, right. you have a, I don't think you have a right to an abortion because I don't know where in the Bill of Rights that right came from. But right. if you want to talk about a legal permission or whatever you want to call it, a law, Let's make a law. That's why Roe v. Wade needs to be overturned, because we can't have Supreme Courts deciding what the law of the land is, because they decided slavery was an idea. You know what I mean? Back before they changed their minds. So the reason behind uh, getting rid of Roe v. Wade is to make the legislators legislate. And that's the bottom line. They'll never legislate. They don't want legislate. They want to fucking that, that, that's what, they want to make it look like they did on, something on the great yesterday stuff. with a 96 nothing vote. Please, they don't want to legislate it. If they don't pass anything, they keep the fucking country, they keep people angry and keep people voting. If they did anything for the people, uh, don't get me started. All right. Well, that's why they want to see a politician doesn't want to. I'll just let you go with this. A politician's yeah. job is never to solve a problem. It's to perpetually have a problem to campaign on fixing. Because once they fix shit, exactly. they can't, what are they going to say? Let's just say tomorrow they make Social Security whole for the next hundred years. 
who's gonna, who can go out there and say, I'm going to fix and save Social Security? Nobody. And it's fixed, right? I'm just giving the hypothetical, obviously. So right, right, right. they never want to solve anything. They need the perpetual campaign issue. And a campaign well, issue is a fundraiser. And that's all these fucking guys care about. Trump actually – in a sense, is the one guy that wants to fix stuff, get rid of regulation. Do My this, dad do that, says the same thing. He says he's a problem stuff. solver. He goes, he wants to fix problems, right. and, they, and 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 all he says the same thing. My dad says he goes, he was a, he's a problem solver. He wants to fix problems. He goes, and every other politician wants to do what you just said: run on a campaign promise and do nothing. That's all. That's what he right, says. Right, because doing nothing is 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 lucrative for them. That's the bottom line. That's why it's like abortion, simple, heartbeat, proof of life. You can't kill it. And if you want to wait till it's the third trimester where it's viable to have the baby removed at that point and don't, uh, you know, uh, have it put up for adoption or some other thing, that's fine. The problem is but these you have these more, nowadays you have all this birth control that's accessible and free. You have this morning after pill, which is accessible and free. Exactly. And you don't I need to sit there and, and tell people it's okay to have a baby at eight months old and change your mind about it. Your quote unquote mental health will, will be saddled by having a child. And so therefore right. we have to kill it. That's fucking ridiculous. Man. I'll agree with you on that. All right, buddy. Got to go. Thanks for calling All the right. show. I appreciate All it, right, man. Mikey. Later. Uh, yeah, right. it's, uh, it's um, you know, it's that's one of the subjects I, I even when I get in political discussions, I just never go to because it's such a touchy subject on both sides, and I I I, I remain to be a political on that subject, even though I do believe a heartbeat law w- would be much better than what they have. But I was always pro life, I pro choice, you know, and the more. I started, you know, the more I think about like, you know, killing things and stuff, the more I start becoming more pro-life, but I, I'm not a total pro-life person. I, I, I'll i always be somebody that uh, I think a heartbeat law would be good. So, anyways, let's change the subject. Somebody uh, asked a question on the chat. How do, do I get, guys... I, I can't open my chat. I, I'm to try, that's what I'll, I've been I'll trying ask, to do. I'll read it. You want me okay. to read it? Yeah, anybody asks yeah. any questions. Well, this what, Craig, Craig Smith asks, what are the odds of Vegas casinos opening by end of June? If they open, will poker rooms also open? Uh, so I, think cas- I think casinos will be open by uh, weeks. a month from now, whatever the month from now is. The second week, I'm going to go with the middle of April. I'm going to go about April. So what are your odds? Uh, he wants to know the odds of Vegas casinos opening by the end of June. June, two, two get... months away. Uh, I don't believe it. No, three Not months now. away. Three months. The end of June. Poker room. He wants to know will they be open? The yes. odds of the Vegas be open by the end of June. Yeah, but yes. what are the odds? A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Michael says uh, both of them say hundred percent. I say mm, probably eighty percent. Eighty-five percent. Casinos, yeah. but about... casinos and poker rooms. The casinos are going to be open in a month. Four weeks max. They'll I agree. Four open. weeks of casinos will be open. But the thing is, is they're not going to open casinos if nobody's flying here because it's going to cost them more money to be open than it is to be closed. So Matt might be right. You guys understand Maybe. what I'm saying? I, I think a lot of the people that play cash live in Vegas or surrounding areas. They don't care about poker. We're talking about casinos. You think they're going to open a fucking casino just for a poker room, you fucking idiot? No, we're not. I'm talking about poker rooms first. Casinos. Casinos will be back open in fucking three weeks. You think they're waiting for some red, uh, uh, a white flag? Everything's great. Come back. Ain't gonna be no three weeks. That's like saying Trump's gonna open the fucking country in three weeks. Today ain't happening. It's gonna be like six. You're wrong. Everything's opening up in three weeks. Okay, I'll take the under casinos opening in three weeks. Even money for you You name it. Name it. Even money. Name the the price. You just said. You just said three weeks. I say casinos aren't open in a month. Even money. How much you want to bet? Why you even money if you're so good? You feel as well. You about. just said three weeks. I'm giving you a fucking week, one week leeway. All right, a month, a month. You're giving me a month on casinos opening, even correct. Money? Okay, the money thousand, thousand? Bucks. you got it. Yeah. Bet. All right, bet. All right, it's what's today's date? That. What's today's date? 23rd, 24th. Let me take a look. 26th. That means by fucking April 26th, you're saying casinos are open. In oh, I'm gonna make a lot of money with this guy. All right, you got a thousand bucks. I got the. All right, bet. Matt, remember to do yeah. Matt, what's your take on the bet we just made? Oh, I didn't even hear it because I'm fighting with some guy in your chat. Oh, some you're up. Oh. Some guy what? says he wants to expose me. Listen to this. He keeps texting over and over in the chat on a YouTube chat saying he can't call him because he's driving. I keep telling him that the phones work in cars these days, but he keeps texting in the chat, in a YouTube chat from the car somehow, but he can't. He doesn't want to talk because he's on the highway, and he says he's going to expose me and Mikey, and he has a lot of facts. 
So I'm dying yeah, to come yeah. in. Hey, can I can, so I can see the chat. Hey, how do I get to the chat? I mean, I, I mean, my uh, the computers told me this a hundred times. It's on YouTube, YouTube chat. Okay, I'm 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 on my channel. Where's the chat at? How do where do I click where is on it? it? Normally, I, I have it open and and uh, oh wait, here this Matt, might be it. How do we get to the chat? Uh, you go to YouTube. You go to the okay. YouTube thing. You okay, to oh, we gotta go to YouTube. on the right on the right hand side. I what? I click on the all the way right on my picture no, on my page. Just. You have to click the link that you tweeted. Your your tweet, Danny oh. tweeted it for you. If you click the oh, link, you go to YouTube. You get the chat. Uh, but where chat? Chat. I can't fucking. Hey, 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 computer. How, where do I find the chat, computer? Computer, computer. Where where's the chat? What happened to the computer? Did the computer die? Oh, I see. Yeah, Mikey, I usually have you the can't chat multitask. Open. You can't multitask, Mikey. You can't multitask. I can multitask. Okay, I'm at, I'm at my page. Where's how do I open the chat, computer? Matt, how do you get to the chat? I'm on the YouTube. You just page. go to the YouTube page, and then on the right hand side, just so right of the of the video, it should show you a chat. I don't know I have your channel. I, I see Mike. This is what I see. Uh, computer, how computer. The, how you, where's the chat again, computer? Oh, fuck him. Fuck you, computer. <laughs> How do you get the chat? Mikey, do it on your iPad. If you do it on your computer, it will fuck with the podcast. Ah, no wonder why I can't find it on my computer. Okay, I got no, my I'm on, iPad. I'm, a, I'm on my phone, but Matt, how do you get to the chat part? All right, I'm okay. I'll find it. All right. Well, it's, it's probably not on the phone. You probably have to no, be on I'm the computer. So, Matt, what do you think of our bet? What's your, uh, say your bet. Okay, so we just bet a thousand. I said, the he link says is on your Vegas. Twitter. The, the, he said the Vegas casinos will be open in one month. I said over a month for a thousand. So he had, the Vegas casinos need to be open by April 26. Open, huh? Mm hmm So just one casino has to be open in Vegas? No, the Vegas, all the casinos. Oh, every casino? Well, at least half of them, I would presume. Uh, okay. We got to decide how many casinos now, Mike. Well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> one casino, there could be, well, no, you know what? It, it, it's, a, it's a law. It's the rule that the governor put down. So if, if, the, if the over, it's when the governor allows them to be open. That's the bad. Okay. That's, that's cool. fair. That's fair. Yeah. So, um, How's it not a chat? Uh, I just click on it. I'll find it. And it's, uh, I click the three buttons. Uh, okay, I got that. Okay, hold, on. hold on a second. Hey, computer, so I opened the link. Now, where's the fucking chat at? So I click those three dots up top and hit on something? Desktop, maybe? I don't know. This might do it. I'm on YouTube, but I don't see the chat. Bro, right, you're I got making it. I got the chat. Dumbass. You gotta hit desktop. You gotta hit desktop. Hit the right. Hit the uh, the three little uh, lines on top, and then click desktop. Bro, right. you're making an echo dumbass. I'm making an echo dumbass. Oh, there we go. See, I I got. Oh, you're talking. Oh, you're talking to Dentelli. He's making an echo. All right, I got it open. So, anybody has questions for me, I got it open now too. Jordy's got dirt on us. Well, dirt on me, oh, and I yeah. guess you too. Oh yeah, yeah, we got dirt on everyone. One of you idiots, not Matt though. Matt Glance is gonna have his teeth knocked out when the dust settles. Yeah, that's what hey, he's Matt, gonna have. Sounds okay. like a I want you so, to. Th this is what we're gonna, gonna change. We're gonna go to we're gonna change the subject a little bit, Matt. I want you to to show everybody that's watching the show of uh, what you have on your walls behind you. Oh right, right. Let me make it closer. Yeah, Can I make, so, uh, oh, if you guys make the window bigger, let me make it bigger. Okay. So how do I click on it? Uh, you can make I see it. Oh, you guys see this? So these are, remember King of the Hill, Poker Night in America Productions? Uh, I do. So I, I created the idea for that King of the Hill when we had those heads up challenges with Phil mm -hmm. Elmith. Um, who else do we have? So you see there, there's Fat Sean Deeb right there. Everyone okay. knows him, right? Right. Everyone knows <laughs> Olivier Bosquet, the uh, karate killer, whatever, M MMA killer. And you guys know uh, Parker Talbot, that dude, and obviously Phil Hellman. 
Okay. And you got they got the cool guys over there. Busque again, Dan Coleman, the guy that won like millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And who else we got? Scott Bloomstein, World Series of Poker main event champion. And then over here, this is my office, by the way, guys. And then we right. have uh, Casella. Oh, your friend Doug Polk's right there. How do you like that, Mike? Look at this guy. Doug I like Leslie. I like Doug. If, if he calls me or texts me, that he apologizes for making out, for trying to get clickbait, for accusing me and Phil Hummets of cheating, which he'll never fucking do, then I'll I'll be his friend. I, I mean, I have nothing against him, but you know, that was just insane. You know. <laughs> and okay, that's enough about my office. That's that's just the fun poker stuff. The other stuff's all trading stuff from back in the day, but I don't embarrass myself. You guys can see me as a as a floor trader, not the Listen, trader. You should be trading now. Anybody who's a I trader should be. is getting rich as fuck. Not a, no, a lot of people losing a lot of money too. But yeah, but I'm just I've saying done all right. Like, okay, so my I have a friend, right? His name's well, you I don't know. You remember it might be before your time, Matt. Do you remember John Brody? You probably don't. That was back in two thousand were you around two thousand three? Two thousand two? No. Okay. Anyway, so his nickname on online name was Self Short. Um and so He's like struggled around for about five years. And now he texts, he's over, he owes me money. And he texts me the other day. He goes, I got 10 grand for you. He owes me a lot more than that. You know, he's on the, he's never been on the dead money list, but he's been on the, uh, you know, the bottom end of the live money. And uh, he's like, I've waited 11 years for this. He goes, this is what I do. This is my dream. It's for Marcus, when the markets, when, I guess when, uh, for good traders, when markets go up and down like 200 points every day, you make a lot of money. When markets are going up and down 1,200 points every day, you really make a lot of money if you're a good trader. So, for sure. Yeah. If you, so, yeah. yeah so There's he's a absolutely lot of opportunity me. right now. Yeah. I mean, I don't have much money, but I, I'm, I, I'm willing to put, put some money in the market. And uh, I mean, I really believe you could turn 50,000 into 5 million uh, if you, there's a lot of investments, but I mean, stocks are so cheap right now, but right now they went up, um, you 20% know, in the last three days. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So like I was talking with him yesterday, right. And Phil Helm used to like stocks are going to drop 30%. I go, my brother thinks they're going to do the same. And then I, I talked to two other people and they both said the same. And then he said, he talked to six people that all said the same. He says, when 10 people all think it's going to drop, he goes, that's when you got to worry. And then what that's did it do sure. today? It went up 1,300 points today. So, uh, well, I mean, that's what he tells Down me. Down 4,000 points since Monday morning. Right. Now, he always tells me, don't look at the, I don't know nothing about stock. To me, a stock is like looking at, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, it's like a, I'm completely unoblivious to anything about stock. So I'm not going to, I mean, to me, it'd be like teaching me how to go cook and be a chef or something. I, mean, I probably have a bit more, more knowledge of that than I would have in stock. So it's like foreign language to me, but, um, he always, he just told me, he goes, you don't, don't even pay attention to Dow, pay attention to S and P. He goes, that's the only thing that matters. Or is that right? Not the S and P, but the fortune 500. I think that's what he told S and P 500. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Okay. Same thing. So, um, I, I just know that, uh, I, I, I don't know, you know, if, if they get this out and the word has it that, cause I know this is not a one-time bailout. This is, I mean, it's a one-time bailout to the industries. Same thing. To- Law. What? What computer? Law? Computer. Fuck off, computer. <laughs> so, um, uh, and, and the thing is, Nothing. it's like, uh, never mind. Exactly. Uh, so, um, uh, it, it's, uh, if he, it, it, as long as I know that they're going to have to get more money out to people like they did this month, because I know it's six weeks that we're all quarantined for. But again, I people that like that's why I fucking hate CNN so much. And I you don't even want to know the thoughts that go through my head. I mean, about some of these fucking disgraceful fucking media people, because I, I see something. We got another call. I'll get back. To that. Hopefully it's Jordy. All right. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's Mike. Hey, Mike. This is Matt. Matt, what's up? Where are you from, buddy? Hey, hey, uh, hey I'm from Lathrop, California. Oh, OK. How do you enjoy being quarantined? Um, well, I actually work at Amazon. So, oh, so I have you're to working your work. ass off. <laughs> yeah. We uh they actually gave us a two dollar raise and uh we That's have a lot for the guys that work. make one point six trillion a day. Or whatever the fuck. Yeah, you know, it's uh it's billion. super scary. Um, how much you guys make an hour? Like twenty eight dollars an hour? It's 
it's really hard because it's like I want to stay home, but I have to pay all my bills, you know. And it's hey, Yo, you're bro, a lot more just, fortunate than everyone else. How much you make an hour now? Uh, so I I make nineteen dollars, nineteen thirty an hour. That's not that's decent. Yeah. That's a good living. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's that's it's, it's nice. I'm married, so my wife works at Amazon too. So no, oh. um, and you got great benefits, okay. right? Great benefits. Probably. Yeah, we have excellent benefits. That's I good. only pay thir- I pay like thirty dollars every two weeks for full benefits. Wow, wow that's awesome. That's good, man. <laughs> well, yeah. you know what? But You're no, ver- I had a question. Um, I had yeah, a question. Go ahead. What do you guys think about Senator Richard Burr selling his stock? Mm-hmm. Uh, before I could probably uh, take this one, you could take. I have my opinion on it, but Matt, you Matt will answer it first. Okay. Okay. Ahead, so how how um, crooked is that? All right. So it sucks when somebody has information and acts on it when nobody else has the information or very few people. Uh, but uh, more so with the the uh, female senator, she and I her husband are worth something like five hundred million dollars or have oh. five hundred million dollars in investments. Oh yeah, the Georgia woman. Yeah, okay. And oh, I don't know about Burr's financial situation, but I can tell from her she's getting a lot of shit too. And she, during that time period, she sold like one or two million dollars in stock, and her portfolio is worth like five hundred million. Mm. So I can't imagine that she was doing something immoral or illegal and only selling, you know, point three percent of her entire yeah. position. Her- Herolibus said sense. the same. It just yeah, doesn't Herolibus. make sense to me. So like, I always try to. Use the denominator of common sense. If somebody knows something and they're going to cheat or steal or lie or front run or use inside information, they're going to sell a big portion of their stock. They're not going to sell less than 1%. It doesn't make sense to me that it's something immoral. I don't know about the, I mean, specifically to Burr, but if it's the same situation for him, uh-huh. you know. I sold, know the whole Burr situation. If he sold 40% of his assets, then maybe you know, there's something to it. Yeah. But if he sold so, under 1%, there's nothing to it. So I'll let, I'll, I'll inform Matt on the Burr situation yeah. and I'll give you my answer. Okay. So, Senator Burr is okay. uh, is the head of the of some kind of intelligence committee, uh, so he's like a big time guy. Okay, he then had a meeting on the um, coronavirus. Okay, and then if uh-huh. you haven't heard yet, Matt, there's a silent um, video uh, recording that went around because the people, his constituents, that pay like ten to a hundred thousand per a plate for this fundraiser, were they given this information? And this was on February 26th, uh, that the stock market or the not stock market, that the coronavirus might be as bad as the 1918 pandemic. Okay. What's, the, what's a silent recording? Oh, what? Well, when the guy was talking about it, the, the constituents started recording in his pot, took a, oh, a recording, secret, secret recording, secret recording, because okay. he, yeah. he was so alarmed by what okay. he was hearing. Okay. And so oh, one, that the very next day, he after after he, um, uh, got the intelligent report and then was meeting with these people where they have that secret recording. He sold, he dumped all these big stocks and then bought stocks in tele tele doctoring. Okay. So he's fucked. Okay. I, I mean, he's fucked. And I think all four, you know, there's four, there was four GOP senators and mm-hmm. Diane Feinstein. And we know Diane Feinstein, she's like 90 years old and ran for reelection last year. So you know how corrupt she is. Oh, um, forget it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, I, I think that he should go to prison. OK, I think there's enough right. evidence yeah. that he goes to prison. Now, as far as the other three, I don't have quite the information, but I follow. Now, again, I follow a lot of people on the right and, and they have fucking. That's why I know, like, you'll never see if something when there's a story like this, like when the, the senator from New Jersey was 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 looking at 20 years in prison, they weren't even covering the trial. Right. But when this happened, everyone on the right, including Fox News and everybody, like went went full bore against Senator Burr and against uh, this lady. Now, the lady from Georgia, when she came on, OK, the very next day she came on Tucker to defend her her, her position. And as somebody who placed poker for a living and was and was looking at her body language, I'm convinced she's 100 percent guilty. I agree. That's, OK, uh-huh. and that's just by like going by body language. I don't give a fuck if you're GOP because right. I GOP is just as scummy as the fucking Dems are. I tell people all the time. I'm like, just if you once you come to a conclusion that they're all scummy piece of shit 
And then and you find aware of it, and you find the good ones in between because there are good. There's plenty of good. But you have to you can't start off being like like biased one side or the other. That's why it's so important that you I tell people that watch my show that I don't care how much you hate right wing media. Force yourself to at least watch Tucker twice a week because Tucker is not a pro Trump guy. He's he's he, he's a libertarian, but he calls people out all the fucking time on both sides and uh and just tells it like it is right he and he had her on and he gave her mm-hmm. some really tough questions and i thought she fucking was uh, uh 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 and i that to me her answering as somebody who reads people for a living which i'm good at really good at right I thought she was yeah. i think she was lying so that's my opinion you think she was lying the the the, the one that matt thinks that, that he doesn't think she was lying but he the woman I, the woman, I think she was lying. The one from Georgia. You think Absolutely. she was lying? Really? Oh, you're being a smart I, ass. I haven't heard about that. No, case, I'm, the woman. I I'm just heard about Richard Burr. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Man. Richard Burr should go to prison. I think he's as guilty as can be. And don't don't worry, there'll be an investigation on it. And it, all you got to do is put the two the dots together. And then when the when that silent and you got to understand this that silent recording that was recorded uh uh without the person's knowledge, um when it came out. Okay, he was still this is up until March 10th. That was t- March 26th. He was writing Senate int- intelligence reports saying we had nothing to worry about. See, this is what I was trying to tell Matt about. I know they were they were they were hiding shit from Trump to take him down because he was still writing columns, nothing to worry about to the American people on March 10th when the on March 26th when this when this recording was 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 public or not public, it was recorded without a guy's knowledge. He was telling these cool constituents under the table that this is going to be, this is as bad as the 1918 pandemic, okay? So this is oh, why I'm trying God. to say, there, I know for a fact that Trump was hidden from a lot of this intelligence. I, I can't prove it, but I just know it. It's not because I'm a Trump supporter. It's, I, I just know, you just watch the body language, okay? This guy, Richard Burr, mm-hmm. up until March 10th, Okay, that's the day I was already in San Jose. That was the day before they closed the NBA down. He had just released an op-ed saying that we have nothing to worry about. Everything's done. And when he already had an intelligence committee saying in the undercover video, that this was worse than the pandemic, and he sold all his stocks the next day. So I, I think he's guilty as fuck, <laughs> and I hope he fucking rots in prison for it. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, yeah, huh? man. That's, these, are, these are supposed to be our leaders. You know, they're no supposed shit. to lead us and, and they're just doing remember crooked shit like all this. of our it's, fucking it's, uh... leaders are not all of them, but the top 10 percent. Like, I'm really good friends with Billy Long. He's a he's a, uh, uh, a member of the House uh, in uh, Missouri. And he tells me 10 percent are corrupt. So there's four hundred and how many? Thirty two. That would be what, about 40 um, Congress people. And if there's 100 senators, that would be 10 senators, which is. That's about what I figure. That sounds about right. He says the rest are actually good people. Oh, wow. And you know what else he told well, me? I this got, was hey. really, really uh, blew, blew my mind. Go ahead. He told me that Nancy, now remember, he's on the right, okay, and a big Trump supporter. Uh-huh. He said Nancy Pelosi's actually a nice person. She just has to play the part to the American people. Now, that, I've always felt that they all play up because they're all lawyers. Lawyers know how to lie and make, every, and, and make everything see whatever they want. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, that's yeah. what he told me. I was shocked. I was expecting him to say she's the fucking worst human that ever lived. So. Wow. Yeah, I know. This is crazy. This is well, all crazy I, I times, got, but uh, it's not time. You know, one- I tell people like I put out on Twitter today. I don't care how much you hate Trump. If you are want to sit there and keep bashing him, that means you want him to fail. And if you want him to fail during these times, you must hate our country and you must unfollow me and fucking move to another country. Okay. Everybody should be rallying and hope that he get that he that he pulls us through this, you know. All right. Yep. I well, think Matt, a lot of stuff Trump does though. He does it. He does it for <laughs> for like the left to, to get it's all you know, yeah. pissed off. And I think Trump Trump knows what he's doing. He when when the left says like, "Oh, he's so stupid," I think he's doing this stuff on purpose to make you guys all of course crazy, he is. You know, dude, he does everything on I mean, purpose. He knows, like, what, he, I've know, been, he knows what I've, he's doing. <laughs> You know how many rallies I watch? I, I watch. I must have watched a hundred Trump rallies and watched see three of them in person, right? And he, at his rallies, he's like, he goes, "Let's do this." Watch them all go crazy. He goes, "I'm going to say this, everybody," yeah. and watch. He goes, "All those red lights will come on," 
and he just trolls him because he knows. Yo, Mike, does, Mike, you know? I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. What's our bet? Casino's okay. over one. Yeah, make sure you know our bet is. So you have, I have over April twenty six that the casinos are allowed to open. All right, and I About. have under April twenty six. Correct. If it's April twenty six, it's, how a, much, it's a tie. How much are we betting? One thousand dollars. You want to make it five? <laughs> I, I would, but I don't, I, I owe people money and I don't bet with money. I don't have. Right, so, I mean, I do have it, but I don't have money. 5,000 to lose right now. So we got a thousand on that. We got a thousand on that. Even but money. you know what? Um, off the air will uh, hit me up. Maybe we'll increase that bet. See, I can't, I can't, right, right, right. I can't be making big bets. I owe too much money, man. I got to pay people. You know? <laughs> so, can't be making bets with money that I owe people. Well, I hey, appreciate you, your call, have man. You seen, um, have you seen the Tiger King on the what? Netflix? We all, we all seen it. <laughs> what a fucking show. I haven't seen it have yet. Seen Tiger it? King, I've seen all oh, everything else on Netflix. It, Mike. <laughs> you got to watch this documentary on Netflix called Tiger King. It's about this Joe Exotic guy. He lives in Oklahoma, and he owns his tiger zoo. And it's just bananas. The whole show yeah. is just Volpe just told me yesterday that it's amazing. I gotta watch it. I, I watched. The, it. I watch. You know what? I did start watching, which was really good, but I fell asleep. Was the hundred question, hundred humans where they they secretly like, at, yeah, like that, that was really cool. That's another good one too. And then I watched. Uh, there's a lot. I, I mean, did, I watched yeah. a, a couple of new movies like Spencer Confidential was real good with uh, Marky right. Mark. Um, and then oh, what was, yeah. I, What's that? I just watched that comedian, uh, Big Boy, whatever. That was pretty funny. Oh, uh, Bert Kreischer? Yeah, he was funny, man. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, Bert's super funny. Yeah, I never even heard of Tom him. Segura's, uh, Tom's got a new special out called uh, uh, Ball Hog. Tom Segura. Yeah. He's really funny, too. All right, man. Well, we're going to get off. I appreciate the call. Well, and uh, tell all your friends, check out yeah, and listen to the mouthpiece. I appreciate it. You got it, buddy. You guys Have a good one. Out there. Bye-bye. You got it. Stay Thank safe. You, Later. See ya. So, um... Waiting on Jordy to drop hard facts on Matt and Dentali. I doubt he will actually call. <laughs> just a troll. Just, just Look, glance. Hey, just Jordy. Glance. Jordy, you, you like the text and the fucking talk shit in the fucking text. Why don't you fucking get out behind your pussy ass fucking texting and, 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 call, and call the show? <laughs> Since Jordy, you know so much. Jordy says he can't call in because he's on the highway driving, but meanwhile yeah. he's texting over and yeah. over the highway driving. Yeah, that's hey, my, that, that's kind of like uh, Mike Postel said. I can't call. I can't get in the show. My phone's been on one percent, and it was on one percent for six hours. Yo, Madison, I got a question for you. Who in the poker community uh, that you considered a friend that night now you consider a fucking scumbag? Scumbags, big words. Um. Back in the day, you could consider them close, a friend, trustworthy. Now, well, straight out I mean, scumbag. I mean, uh, I I don't think I have anybody in that in that category. I mean, I was, I I was obsessed. Right. You know, when me and Daniel were were fucking wore the roses over politics for three years, that really bothered me a lot. Um, Negrano? but we're good. We're close again, so it's all good. Negrano? Oh, we're good. We're close as can be now. Yeah, so yeah. I like Negrano too, but he's, he's a good hearted person. That's yeah, the thing is, is, is but even, he's... you know, I never, I never, you know, and I never will, you know, go, you know, let people know like what, how bad it really was. Just imagine what the public knows and times it by a hundred. That's how bad the right, feuds right. No, were. I get it. And so um, to say, but I always kept, kept saying, you know, it's, it's not his fault. You know, he's just, he just needs to, get more informed or whatever. And, and the bottom line is, is I know he has a heart of gold. I know how many people he's helped. I know how much he cares. And yes, he's very opinionated and it's, and it's, he's very hard to win an argument with because he's right most of the time. But when he's like my girlfriend and a couple other friends is like the right 95% of the time. And when they're wrong, that 5% of the time, that's when it's war of the roses because uh, some people just don't want to admit when they're wrong. And, um, but Daniel's a good, a good hearted person, a good person. I have nothing bad to say about him and, uh, or anybody. I just have a lot, he has a lot of conviction in yeah. his beliefs and that's he it. Just, no, that's the it. thing. And, and, and even back, to, uh, a lot of people don't understand is like when thing people don't realize Daniel wasn't always rich. I mean, 
but in 2000 and, uh, 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 five, I mean, when he had full contact poker or whatever, and then he lost that, you know, I, I cried. I'm like, you guys, I begged full tilt to put him on. And we got in the biggest fights over it. Like they wanted to not, I said, just give them a point for free. And they were just, you know, whatever. And I don't even want to get into that. I don't bring back old memories, but, but, you know, uh, the thing, when things turned around for Daniel is like, he used to just go cutthroat against Annie Duke and then he stopped doing it. And then things went uphill for him. And, um, you know, you got to, no matter, listen, you can have a conviction on people and stuff, but nobody's perfect. People make mistakes. And he just was publicly just, just destroying her nonstop. And, uh, I just thought it was wrong. I and mean, that was when we were even then when we were really close and, um, you know, even like the poker world, you know, when, when people say things about Annie Duke, they're like, Oh, she's this, such a scum, whatever. She was involved with Epic poker. I'm like, excuse me, Epic poker gave 400,000 away three consecutive times. What has the world series of poker ever done for anybody? So they fucking ran out of money and they weren't able to give the million. Okay. Does that make them a terrible people? They didn't steal all the fucking money. You know, they tried to make something that they thought would work and they lost a lot of money on it. You know, as far as but Annie being, in, you know, there's a lot of things that you can dislike. There's nobody in poker though that you have a different opinion about though, right? No, I mean, I pretty, I pretty much know who all the sleaze balls are. I mean, I mean, everybody in poker does, right, Matt? Pretty much. I mean, would you say I think that? it's pretty. I think it's pretty well known in the high limit circles for sure. Yeah, I mean, everybody know. I mean, there's there's the only different the only difference of opinion like I have. I think Jared Blazek's a good guy, and everybody else thinks he's a scumbag. Uh, I I I mean, I I just I I think that he's misunderstood, and I think a lot of things that you know, that happens that they say about That's him. That's funny you brought him up. I know Jared from back, back in the day. You think he's a good guy, right? Or no? Well, I know him from my neighborhood. That's, mm. I don't know him in the poker world. I know him from playing home games in yeah. a, somebody's uh, game in the city. But I always liked him. I always thought he was a funny kid, but I... He's funny. Me, be, me being in the poker world, the, the fucking hate that people have for him. Wow. Wow, unbelievable. You know, and, 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 I, and I don't... I mean, uh, you know, I don't know about the multi-account, whatever. I mean, fucking Bonomo multi-accounted and, and he, you know, he's been forgiven for it. I mean, I don't know what Jared did it, but I mean, I just, there's not enough things for me. The, the, I think he's a good guy. Listen, when things were bad for me, got bad for me, this is before my injury, right? So after I had made like 1.2 million for the guy that was backing me and uh, he told me he always has a million behind me. I never have to worry about money. So I, you know, I paid a lot of debts. I, I gambled or whatever. And one day he, out of nowhere, just said he can't back me anymore. And I look, I look down the road now and I found out why, because uh, six months later, I found out from his partner who was playing Chinese with, with Abe Nasseri said that he, him and Abe, his partner and Abe lost 2.4 million staking him. And that's why he couldn't afford to yeah, put me in anymore. Gone. So uh, wow. Jared, Jared Blesnick uh, put up 100000 for me in 2014 uh, during the World Series, and I put up 50, and he gave me 50%. And I did, that was a year that I, before I knew I was injured, and I kept saying there was something neurologically wrong with me, and there was. There was a disc fucking had my spinal cord almost severed. So, of course, your spinal cord controls your whole brain function. So I was right. There was something neurologically wrong with me. I mean, so it's like, I was, I mean, I cashed zero times. I mean, hands that I'm supposed to raise, I was calling. Hands that I was supposed to call, I was folding. I mean, and I just kept saying something's neurologically wrong with me. Like I never could have believed what I've been through actually happened. You know what I mean? What year so, was that? 2014. Oh, you know? a long time back. And he, by the way, he's the only person I ever lost money to stake me ever. You know, so I want to, I want to make that money back for him one day. And I hopefully talk a community is funny. Everybody's got a fucking opinion. You know what People the young kids different do, side. Yeah. What the young kids don't understand about poker. And this is why so many of the, the top players were very upset with Ted when he went public about our bet. Okay. When he knew what the parameters of the bet were. And uh, after I had settled it all up, his part of it was him to go public and say that it's all been settled, but he never did. But now that I look back on it. The only reason why he went public with it was because he was being sued by casinos he, for millions and millions of dollars and figured if he goes public with it, he could maybe have a public opinion where I would pay him money I never had. But 
listen, I don't hold nothing against Ted Ford. I know I've said this many a times. If I had a million dollars right now, okay, and I didn't owe Ted anything and Ted was dead broke, I would put him in 200,000 of it just from the wow. bottom of my heart because I know he was Cliff Josephy of poker from fucking 1996 through 2000 and whatever it was, eight. He staked everyone. He helped everyone out. He even staked Negreanu when Negreanu had no money, okay? Putting him in. He helped. There is not a person in the poker world old time that didn't help fucking Ted out. And so, um, you know, that's why Daniel did help him out uh, one year at the World Series and put him in a lot of events. That's why I said Daniel's got a good heart. And um, a lot of other people that, you know, I, I, my, my, the thing I always tell people on the show is never forget where you come from. When people forget where they come from, that's when you become an enemy of mine. Okay, well, you know what? Now that you brought up that, you asked somebody who I, I used to think good of. Here we go. I Let's finally found that person. Are you ready? And I know this person is the scummiest fucking human on the planet. <laughs> I don't care. His name is Jean Robert Balande. No. Wow. There you Dropping go. Dropping bombs. No. There you go. There's a bomb for you. Dropping bombs. Bombs. Well, we got to hear the story. Okay. Obviously. Let's call JRB. Let's not <laughs> say we did. So, as you know, and Matt knows this, JRB is broke his whole life. Okay. And um, uh, he got, uh, he had this little job at the uh, Aria where he was getting right. like, like, he was getting like, I don't know, like 2000 a month or some, something small, 1800 a month, I think maybe it was, right? And uh, Durr was staking him in the mixed games. That, and I literally gave up my box of Bellagio because I figured, okay, the Bellagio's done. All the games are going to be at Aria. I got myself a box at Aria. We're playing 3,600, 4,800. Basically, the game's like basically around JRB and maybe one other person. Um, and he owed a lot of people money. And I'll never forget this. He owed Huck like 60000 and. They're selling Huck selling a sixty thousand debt for like six thousand. They're all he's everybody was selling JRB debt for ten cents on the dollar, and I'm just like, you guys are fucking crazy. And at the time, he owed me twenty three thousand, right? I go, you guys are fucking crazy. I ain't selling none of my JRB debt. I go, the guy gets staked in big games. Of, even the worst players are going going to go on big rushes. I said, if they go on big rushes, they're going to they're going to end up paying people, right? So in uh, uh, two thousand twelve. He goes, Mike, Mike, I'm so broke. Please, please loan me $500 to get in this PLO game. I'm like, uh, put me in for 500. I'm like, okay, JRB. You know, I always helped him out. You know, everybody always helped him out. We felt fucking bad for him. And, um, you know, then all of a sudden he uh, started getting uh, bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden that mixed game went out the door. And then uh, him and Bobby Baldwin and all of them, and I don't even want to that's that's for a whole new subject about that game that went on there for about five years. Um, but um, I know a lot of things about that game that, that I recently never knew about that I was told a lot about, but I'm not going to go there on this broadcast. And so um, uh, one day he calls me up. I was uh, at the Borgata. This was uh, 2013, 2013, so I was like a year before my injury. And he's like, uh, how much do I owe you? I go, 23, two. And he goes, okay, it's in your account. I'm like, man, this guy must have won a million dollars for him to call me <laughs> to pay the 23,000. So I was like making fun of everybody that, you know, that bought. There was a lot of people that bought JRB debt for like 10 cents on the dollar. Probably, let's just say he owed 400,000, like 300 of it was sold at 10 cents on the dollar. Okay. So with, with that said, um, uh, two, two, two and a half years ago, uh, I was doing fine. Maybe two years ago, it was, uh, yeah, like two and two, two and a half years ago. I, um, I was playing on a site, an underground site that I completely destroyed until the games were completely dead. And, uh, all of a sudden they put in one, two hundred oh eight and, and horse games and 50 new people showed up on the site and I lose 181,000. Okay. Uh, you know, you have to understand you're playing three, four games at a time, you know, and, and it's online, you know, it's almost like playing six and 1200. So, you know, it's probably, I ran really bad, but I have my own opinions on it. I'm not going to go there. So, um, 
part one of the sites that I uh, had a piece that that uh, JRB owned a piece of. Uh, he had an account for me where I had a twenty thousand dollar limit, right? And I lost nine thousand on that account. Not the whole twenty. Remember, I could have easily if I wanted to take a shot at him. I could. Yeah, have but just when lost. he said when he said your money's in the account, he paid you back. Yeah, he paid me back. Now it took him four and a half years. Four and a half years. Okay. Now, with that said, um, he's like harassing me for this nine grand that I owe him. Right? I go, dude, you owed me twenty three thousand for four years. I never asked you once for it. It's nine fucking grand. You're playing five hundred a thousand and traveling the globe in the biggest games in the world, living in a two million dollar place at the at the whatever that fucking hotel is next to the aria is in the pen mandarin, mandarin. Man, whatever i'm like i'm like give me a fucking break right now i'll read this out loud just so i could do, i don't even know so i really go there in public no maybe i shouldn't Let, let's just let's just put it this way don't I'll, 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 I, okay so i'll just go this way you know i said listen this is i'll, I'll just I'll, I'll 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 circumvent the whole story and i'll say Every year for the last three years, I've won a hundred and something thousand at the World Series. I pay out seventy-five thousand people I owe. I have twenty-five thousand left. I lose two. I lose two sessions in a row, and I'm dead broke. I said this year I'm not paying anybody. I, I said I'm not paying anybody until I have a two hundred thousand dollar bankroll. And after that, if I win thirty, I'm going to call people to pay off thirty. If I win another fifty, I'm going to call people to pay out another fifty. I said if I lose twenty-five, I'm not calling anybody until I get back to two hundred. I said, I can't put myself in position to go broke because my, my, my money management was always so horrible. So I'm not going to lie. I'm, 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 I'm pretty close to that number. And once I do, I'm going to start calling people. And so I told him, I said, when I get to this, I said, you'll start getting paid. And he's like, if you think I'm going to wait for you to get to 200000 and before you start paying me, you got another thing coming. He goes, you're going to have to, you give me a thousand dollar payment every time I see you. And I'm just like, who the fuck you think you are? I'm like, <laughs> you owed me 23,000 for four years. You fucking motherfucker. Why he's traveling the world playing 500,000, like dusting off 500 grand in a fucking with the easiest folds in the world. Right. I'm fucking had, to, I struggled for two years eating fucking McDonald's and fucking Taco Bell every fucking day. So he could go f straight out fuck himself. So anyways, <laughs> I'll just go as far as that. I mean, it's it's a lot worse than that. And so, listen, that toes that that, that shows true care. Here's you want to talk about somebody forget where you come from. There's somebody I see completely a lot of I, forgot I see where you a come lot from. Of that. You can't nature. forget where you come from. I'm still yeah. friends with people. I'm, there's two people that I talk to at least once a month that I used to deal poker with. Two. Okay, there's three. There's another one I talk to at least once every two months. You can't yeah, forget. Where you come from how, in life? How did he wind up going from owing everybody money to playing five hundred one thousand? Well, you well, you don't know the whole thing. So he no. had okay. So he had Dur Dur staked him. Then he quit staking him. Then uh, uh, another guy, uh, Marcus staked him, and Marcus was when it, what got him really kind of on his feet. Then Marcus quit staking him. Right. Then Andrew Robel started staking him, and I, I guess, well, we know how great a pl pl player Andrew Robel is. So I, so part of it was that Robel had to be able to play in these games that he set up with fucking, like he plays in games where he's like the third best player and he couldn't be the third best player on, on, on the moon in any, that just shows you how great these games are. So, um, you know, now he's like, was like telling me I'm 2 million in makeup again. Well, sorry, you're worried about a thousand bucks for me by your fucking, he spent two years fucking, Spending millions in dollars. I mean, his, his wife, he had two kids with, probably th was under the impression that that they had the was set for life. Oh, guess what, buddy? You know, welcome to the real world. You know, don't be. I, I don't even want to get into it, but yeah. listen, I I knew, I, and and part of the you know my text to him was like, well, how about all the money? Like like Huck Huck's really struggling right now. Like like why don't you give him the fifty four thousand that he bought your debt out? You fucking scumbag. I don't know. I'm not going to go there. I'm done with that. Yeah, it, it gets tight with money, man. It's crazy. Listen, everybody knows in poker. Listen, one thing I don't call anybody, I, I know this. And all the old timers know this. You never, ever, ever talk about people that owe you money. When you loan money in poker, okay, you're loaning it from the goodness of your heart because you care about the person or like that person, hoping you get it back. But if you don't get it back, 
It's just, that's what happens when you loan it. The young kids don't understand this. They want to go public with every $1,000 that's owed to them yeah. that somebody says something about. Yeah, it's, just, it's just what it is. If, if you think, if I did that, oh my God. I, I mean, like there's, there's over a million dollars owed to me. that I know yeah, 900 yeah. of it I'm never going to see. You know, it is what it is. I, I remember when TJ Cloutier got me. He got me for 1600 <laughs> And he won the, he got second in the World Series in 2000, and I couldn't get the 1600 when he got fucking 700,000 or a million, whatever the fuck it was. Got me for like a thousand. Most people it only got for 300. He got me for, you know, when I loan people like 500, I always ask, tell myself, please don't pay me back. Please don't pay me back. Because if they pay me back, then they're going to want a thousand the next time. Then they pay you back, then they're going to want 2000, and then they stiff you in your fuck. So it's like, uh, you know, you, you help people out because you, you care about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Matt True. doesn't loan, Matt doesn't loan money. But if I, if I said to Matt, I desperately need a thousand bucks, I'll, I could take me six months to pay you back. Matt would have a thousand bucks at my doorstep tomorrow. You know, there's some people you care about, you know, that oh, you help out, you understand? And, and that's, that's, that's the most important thing in poker. And, 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 uh, and, and it's just really weird. I always said, used to tell people and, uh, you guys could jump in here because I'm kind of dominating the conversation a little bit. Is uh, um, in in the poker world, I used to say, I don't care how much credit the banks give me, as long as my credit's good in the poker world, I got nothing to worry about. And I, <laughs> and I do believe that's true, until that's things true. were bad. Until things were bad for me, and and only a few people stepped up to the plate. So, hey, if people, I get you. Some people get jammed up, but as long as they make it their uh, priority to pay you back, sometimes it takes time. Shows yeah. a lot of credibility, you know. Dude, it's the I, people that dis- disappear on you, that are the, those are the ones you got to watch. I for. when I won NBC head up, I called somebody. I paid him two hundred thousand the next that day, and then I went around. Um, when I won, uh, I went around and paid out like another hundred, and then like I won the bracelet that year in twenty thirteen, and everybody can remember that was around there. I was walking around with like a hundred thousand in flags like handing out five and 10,000 to people. <laughs> now those were all from Chinese poker. Like, you know, I played, I didn't realize how big the Chinese was, you know, when we started uh, and I lost a lot of money. So, you know, it wasn't money I owed and you know, Chinese. I mean, it was always a Achilles heel to a lot of people. So I, I would always pay out and never get paid, you know? And so now it's just like, you know, fuck it, man. I didn't get paid off it. So, Anyway, playing the series, Mike. What's that? If the series going, you're gonna play. Well, what do you think I'm gonna do? Fucking sit at home. Every Fuck question is that. Oh, that's like like the dumbest question. That's a qu- that's a liberal question. That's somebody a liberal would ask me. You told me you can't get out of the fucking house. I don't know. So no, I get out. Well, here's the thing. It's it's like I'm perfect. My health is perfect. But when I walk more than fifty yards, okay, I get it because I have a permanent spinal cord injury. And my doctor explained it to me. He's like, okay, so you're, he goes, let's just say you have a bruise on your arm. And what happens when you hit the, keep hitting that bruise over and over? It's going to swell tender. up. Yeah, it's going to get tender and swell up. He goes, when you're walking, he goes, you're, it's hitting that bruise every time, you know, you're, you're, you're the skeletal muscle. He goes, you're agitating it. Right? And then it, it put, then it, it gets a little swollen, presses against the nerve. The nerve shoots this horrifying pain down my leg into my foot so it's something i'm stuck with the rest of my life which is why you know when i you always see me the last three years on a scooter and i'm doing really good because i don't you know i go i I get up valet they bring the scooter right to the car i drive right you know and i give them like a thousand bucks for the whole world series and uh they give me perfect service they see me driving up they got my scooter halfway up and i don't have to walk the only thing i have to do is walk is get out of the scooter and go from table to table and if you think about that, it's it's a little bit less than fifty yards probably the whole time. So, yeah. uh, you know that's it. And and the the stimulator they put in in uh, January of uh, 2019 eliminated. I used to have all the pain around my whole side, and I used to have pain patches around me, and uh, that eliminated that. So, well, that guys, um, this has been a. I guess we could wrap this up a little bit. We've been on for a, what three hours? Oh, even longer, three and a half hours. It's a good conversation, man. Um, uh, I appreciate everyone uh, listening to episode 39 here of the mouthpiece. Um, and uh, tune back later this week. Uh, we uh, hopefully are going to get Chris Moneymaker on. And also Huck Seed's going to come on the show. So nice. everybody out there, 
I want to thank, first of all, Matt Glantz, Mike Dentali for coming on and doing this. A lot of fun. Um, everybody stay safe. We'll all get through this together. Let's God all bless stay all. COVID-free, boys. That's it. Love 100%. you guys. Have a great right. time. Love out there, guys. But I'm done, man. Be good. Take care, everyone. Later. The mouthpiece. All right.